Chapter 431, Xiang Rong Rebels On this day in the Feng Manor, everyone woke up early and went over to Peony Courtyard to gather without any prior agreement. Originally, according to Feng Jinyuan and the matriarch's intentions, they should have gone to Pudu Temple to invite a monk to perform a ritual. First, it was to redeem Chen Yu's soul. Second, it was to dispel the bad luck in the family. But this rain was coming down too heavily, and a part of the road going to Pudu Temple was ruined. Not a single carriage could pass through. The monk could not be invited, thus the matriarch decided to invite four religious masters that were popular among the people. No matter whether or not they were skilled, either way, it was just something to be done symbolically. The main hall of Peony Courtyard had already been arranged for the masters. The four masters stood in place and awaited their orders. They were waiting for the time to begin chanting suturas and redeeming the soul. When the Feng family gathered around, candles had already been lit. The masters said that they were called guiding lights. They were used to guide the dead person to the underworld. Han Shi was a little scared and was advised to return back to Yilan courtyard. The matriarch stood at the entrance of the hall and looked out. After looking for a while, she asked Feng Jinyuan, in such heavy rain, can they carry out the execution? Feng Jinyuan gritted his teeth and said, I heard that His Highness the Ninth Prince will supervise the execution personally. Upon hearing this, the matriarch knew that there was no hope. She let out a long sigh and complained to Feng Jinyuan, it really is a loss that you were the Prime Minister before. How could you not even see this situation clearly? The one that the Feng family should have placed its hope in was not Chen Yu. It was A Heng. If we could have treated A Heng better, who knows how much glory the Feng family would be enjoying right now. There was more that the matriarch did not end up saying. Choosing not to favor a treasure that calls the ruling emperor father emperor and helped train the troops of Da Shun while producing steel, instead, he had to favor a slut like Feng Chen Yu. They truly were blind. The rain outside fell harder and harder. He Zong ran in while wearing a coat and urgently reported, the stage for the execution has already been set. The person sent by the manor to investigate reported that His Highness the Ninth Prince will be overseeing the execution personally. Eldest young miss has already been taken in the direction of the stage from the prison. Feng Jinyuan was shaken and nearly teared up. After all, he had raised her for over ten years and he had doted on this daughter for many years. To say that he was not pained would be a lie. But the matriarch told him, put away all of the pity that you feel for that slut. From this day forward, remove Feng Chenya from the Feng family's genealogical record. The Feng family does not have this sort of daughter. Feng Jinyuan gritted his teeth and had to remind the matriarch of a truth. It was Feng Yuheng that did something to Chen Yu. These words happened to be heard by Xiang Rong who had come over. She stopped and looked at her father with a very puzzled expression, asking, if eldest sister did not do such a dirty thing with eldest brother, second sister would not have a chance to do anything, even if she wanted to. Father, what sort of benefits did eldest sister promise you that could have you still treat her this well after being demoted and having the manor taken away? Could it be that she is the only daughter in your life? Then what does second sister count as? What do Fen Dai and I count as? Xiang Rong had been inexplicably angry the past few days. For the matriarch and Feng Jinyuan to hear this, she now dared to ask this out loud. Feng Jinyuan angrily swung his hand, slapping Xiang Rong across the face and dropping her to the ground. And she was given a fright and quickly went over to support her. Her anger surged forth, for the sake of a fallen Feng Chen Yu with questionable morals. Does husband plan to beat all of the children in the manor to death? Shut your mouth! Feng Jinyuan loudly shouted, You're just a concubine. Where is there any right for you to speak here? If you continue to spout nonsense, don't blame me for kicking you out. If you're going to kick us out, just do it. Xiang Rong stood up from the ground and raised her small chin toward her father, rather than being angered for a lifetime in this manner. I would rather that you let me and my mother go free. She frankly did not even call her concubine mother, directly calling her mother. 
Feng Jinyuan was so angry that his entire body trembled. He really wanted to kick Anxi out, but he also knew that if he did this, it would validate the claim that he only ever did things for Chen Yu. There was no point, no matter how much he felt pained, as that person was about to die. The matriarch coldly snorted then glared at Xiang Rong and Anxi but did not say anything. Instead, she turned to Feng Jinyuan and said, Think carefully about your future and this family's future. Feng Jinyuan loudly shouted, I am thinking about it every day. He then grabbed his ong and shouted, Go call that slut Feng Yu Hen over here. Have her come and send off her eldest sister. Although the Cheng Shi sisters were standing a bit further away, they still heard his words. The two sisters looked at each other before Cheng Jun Man said, Husband, County Princess is your daughter, and she is also the Ninth Prince's official princess. With you calling her a slut, who are you talking about? Her words were ice cold, and it came with a boom of thunder outside. This immediately caused Feng Jinyuan to wake up. He dared to curse at Xiang Rong, at An Shi, and he even dared to get angry with Kang Yi, however, he did not dare be the slightest bit impolite to the Chengxi sisters. The matriarch was the same. When she heard Cheng Jun Man speak, she quickly helped speak up for Feng Jin Yuan, he has been angered and became muddled. Cheng Jun Mei also spoke up. She had always been more direct than her elder sister, thus her words were less polite, before coming to the Feng Manor, auntie said that our support would not be husband. It would be county princess. That's why, even if husband has these sorts of thoughts about county princess, it would be best to keep them inside. If they are spoken, and we hear them, who knows when we will let it slip, and it will become known in the palace? Cheng Jun Man tugged at her, saying, Don't say that. Right now, we are living under the same roof. Staying alive is most important. These words were even more ferocious. The meaning was if Feng Jin Yuan decided to try and kill them, what should they do? Hearing this, the matriarch quickly waved her hand, no way, no way. You are Jin Yuan's official wives. From this day forward, you will be the safety and honor of the Feng family. We are still relying on you. While saying this, she gave a look to Feng Jin Yuan. Unfortunately, Feng Jin Yuan was truly not in the mood to deal with this. At this time, he Zong finally managed to escape from Feng Jinyuan's grasp and cleared his throat before saying, even if this servant went to invite her, that would not be possible. I heard that second young miss left the manor early in the morning for the stage of execution in order to watch. What? Feng Jinyuan bit down so hard that he nearly shattered all of his teeth, that little SL that girl's heart, what exactly is it made of? Her eldest sister is about to be executed yet she is actually going to watch. Why not? Xiang Rong faintly spoke up, at the time that eldest sister tried to kill her time and time again, why did father not ask what her heart was made of? Also, father, what is your heart made of? Ever since this girl had been engaged to Bukong, for some reason, she had developed a personality that deliberately made things worse. She no longer feared the people of the Feng family. She would say whatever she wanted to say, and she no longer cared if she was hit or punished. Just like this moment, she broke free from Munchi and quickly walked out. As she stepped into the rain, she said, I will also go and take a look. She then quickened her pace and disappeared after a short while. And she was scared silly. She was about to give chase, but she was grabbed by Feng Jin Yuan. He did not dare curse at Feng Yu Heng but Xiang Rong did not have much of a backing. In an instant, all of his hatred for his second daughter was transferred to his third daughter, and he viciously said to Anxi, you cannot give chase. It would be best if she died out there. He then turned around and said to his servants, tie her up. She is not allowed to go anywhere. No matter how Anxi cried or screamed, she could not break free from the restraints of the strong grannies. She even had her mouth stuffed with a cloth, making her unable to make a sound. The matriarch's heart was also a mess, asking He Zong, is it more or less time? He Zong said, there is still one more hour. The matriarch did not want to wait any longer and hurried the masters, saying, let's start now. The masters were doing this for money. 
if their boss said to start, they would start, thus countless candles were lit. The funeral banner was lifted, and they began shaking the rattles in their hands. The four began chanting sutras while circling the hall. Nobody else in the Feng family spoke, standing silently to the side. Everyone was quietly hoping in their hearts that Feng Chen Yu's death would be the end of the Feng family's troubles. When Xiang Rong exited the manor, she did not know who had given her an umbrella, but she held the umbrella and rushed in the direction of the execution stage. Before she could even get out of the road, the umbrella had been torn to shreds by the wind. Xiang Rong simply tossed it and increased her pace. Why else would it be said that there were certain things that required special circumstances to be accomplished? Given Xiang Rong's weak and timid personality, if it was not for a bit of Feng Yu Heng's teaching, if it was not for the Feng family forcing her time and time again, if it was not for the instigation of the Bu family's engagement, if there was no torrential downpour, perhaps she could never do something like rushing through a heavy rain. Moreover, she had left home after arguing with Feng Jinyuan. Xiang Rong did not know where she found the strength. Falling time and time again, she would just keep standing up and desperately continue running forward. As she ran, a carriage suddenly passed beside her. She did not have time to dodge and was pulled sideways by the carriage. It looked like she was about to fall into the path of the carriage's wheels. She was completely frightened. She did her best to straighten out her body, however, it was in vain. Her scattered hair had been caught by the wheel, and the pain caused her to tear up. Dropping to the ground, her neck was extended. Xiang Rong closed her eyes and could practically feel the wheel press against her neck. However, at this time, the carriage suddenly came to a stop. The neighing of the horses could be heard, and it looked as though the carriage had come to a complete stop. Immediately following this, a person squatted at her side and reached out to unfasten her hair from the wheel. They then went to hold her shoulder and face. Xiang Rong let out a sigh of relief. She had been saved. She wanted to open her eyes to see who had saved her, but she was currently facing up. The rain was falling too heavily, and there was no way for her to open her eyes, however, her hands were still moving around in horror. After moving them around for a bit, they were grabbed by that person, and she was picked up. At this time, a girl's voice was heard, quickly, it's almost time. The person that had saved her carried her into the carriage, and the heavy rain had suddenly been blocked by the carriage. Xiang Rong heard a voice near her ear. It was a man's voice, saying, it's raining so heavily. Why are you running outside on your own? She had not yet opened her eyes, however, Upon hearing these words, the corners of her lips subconsciously curled up. Chapter 432, The Death of Chen Yu It was raining heavily outside. Although the inside of the carriage was separated by wood, there was still plenty of moisture. Xiang Rong was completely soaked, and she was placed on a tiger fur seat. The once luscious and thick blanket was immediately soaked. She subconsciously moved to stand up not wanting to ruin this person's things, but there was a hand gently pressing down on her shoulder, pushing the person standing up back down. Just keep sitting. It's fine. It was still that faint voice, however, it was very calming. Xiang Rong looked up at that person. The person's formerly clean white clothes had become soaked from going outside to save her. His hair was also soaked, however, he did not lose his refined appearance. She could not control herself, and tears filled her eyes. In a timid manner, she spoke up using a voice that could barely be heard, Your Highness the Seventh Prince. This person was Xiu An Tanhu. He helped Xiang Rong sit down before moving his hand from her shoulder. He then sat across from her and ignored that he was wet. Frowning slightly, he asked her, Where are you going? Before waiting for Xiang Rong to reply, Yu Qian Yin, who was sitting to the side, suddenly said, it's you. Third young miss of the Feng family? She then looked out the window and asked, where is the Bu family's general? Is he not together with you? Xiang Rong was stunned and did not know how she should reply to this question. She just looked at Xiu An Tanhu, a hint of resistance appearing in her eyes. Answer my question. 
Xiu Antan who stared at her and said, Where are you going? Why did you start crying? Yu Qian Yin's voice sounded once more. Tilting her head, she looked at Xiang Rong in confusion, Could it be that you were hurt from the fall just now? While saying this, she handed over a cloth towel. Xiang Rong was feeling a little irritated and received the towel, replying, I did not cry. It's rain from my hair. She then replied to Xiu An Tan Hu's question before waiting for Yu Qian Yin to reply, I am going to the execution stage. Eldest sister will be executed today. I heard that second sister has already gone. I also want to take a look. Xiu An Tan Hu frowned and asked her, What's the to watch with someone getting killed? Xiang Rong put down the towel and calmly said, There's nothing really not worth watching. Your Highness, where are you going? If we are going the same way, just send me there. If we're going in different directions, just let me out. I can go on my own. Xiu An Tan Hu shook his head and gently sighed. This child was no longer the same as before. He could not remember when he had first met Xiang Rong, but in his memory, she always followed behind Feng Yu Heng, and she had a timid appearance. Whenever she saw him, her face would turn red, and she would not dare to speak. Afterward, he became relatively familiar with her, and it was mostly because of Feng Yu Heng. He had acted to protect this girl a few times, but there had not been any further interaction. That was why he did not know when this girl had become like this. Losing her former timidness, it was replaced by her current bold stubbornness. Her eyes seemed to be a bit more resolute. She had been born with an appearance that was slightly similar to Feng Yu Heng. Now that she was like this, she seemed to look a bit like Feng Yu Heng. Xiu An Tan who looked at her for a while and did not say anything aside from, We were just about to go to the execution stage. We will bring you over. Xiang Rong clearly replied, Thank you. She then leaned back in the carriage and slightly closed her eyes, not making a sound. Yu Qian Yin sat at Xiu An Tan Hu's side and spoke to him about how Xiang Rong had fallen off of the bridge only to be saved by the Bu family's general. As she spoke, she said to Xiang Rong, I heard that you became engaged to that general from the Bu family? Congratulations, congratulations. Just look at how you fell from the bridge and he happened to come and save you. This truly is fate. Don't you think so? Xiu An Tan Hu did not react. It did not seem that there was any change in his mood. Xiang Rong was the same. She continued to lean back with her eyes closed, taking a nap. It was as though Yu Qian Yin's words were spoken into a bundle of cotton. There was no response, and there was no stir. The carriage quickly advanced and they arrived very quickly at the stage of the execution. The driver outside lifted the curtain of the carriage slightly and said to Xiu An Tan Hu, Your Highness, it's raining too hard outside. There's no possibility of observing the execution. There is a restaurant across from the execution location. How about we go to that restaurant to grab a spot near the window? We will still be able to see from there. Xiu An Tan Hu nodded, That's good. The carriage moved a little further forward then stopped. The person outside brought out an umbrella. Xiu An Tan Hu was the first to get out, and Yu Qian Yin followed behind him, waiting for him to reach out and help her, however, Xiu An Tan Hu reached in and said to Xiang Rong, give me your hand. Xiang Rong was stunned for a moment then reached out without any hesitation. Xiu An Tan Hu carefully helped her out of the carriage before informing the servant help the girl out. Saying this, he pulled Xiang Rong into the restaurant. This restaurant had been opened across from the site of the execution. Perhaps it was because the restaurant had been opened in anticipation of earning money from people coming to observe the execution, but the shopkeeper was excited whenever there was an execution. He originally thought that even if there was an execution today, nobody would come and watch given the heavy rain, however, who knew that such a noble customer would come? The seventh prince, Xiu An Tan whose appearance was very famous. Anyone in the capital that was a little bit interested would be able to recognize him. He was a little confused to see the seventh prince help a girl out of his carriage. For a while, this shopkeeper did not dare recognize this person. 
Xiang Rong seemed to have realized that this was improper and moved her arm, quickly removing it from his grasp. Xiu Antan who did not say much and just walked up the stairs. Yu Gian Yin glanced at Xiang Rong then quickly followed. Xiang Rong asked the shopkeeper, I want a spot on the second floor next to the window that will allow me to see the execution stage. The shopkeeper was stunned, you did not come to get there? Xiang Rong shook her head, no. The shopkeeper felt a little troubled, there are two rooms that are best for seeing the execution stage. One of them was already occupied. The remaining one he pointed at the group of people that had just gone upstairs, all that remains are the scattered seats outside. You see, then I'll take one of those? Xiang Rong did not say anything else and went up the stairs. Being completely soaked, she shivered from the cold wind. She hurried the shopkeeper, give me a pot of hot tea first. Just as this was said, someone upstairs shouted, third young miss, quickly come up. We have hot tea here. She felt that this voice was very familiar and looked up. There, she saw Wang Kun waving to her. Xiang Rong rejoiced and increased her pace, rushing over to Wang Kun, anxiously asking, is second sister also here? Wang Kun nodded, pulling her into the private room. Sure enough, she saw Feng Yu Heng sitting inside. She was drinking tea and munching on sunflower seeds. Seeing her stand there in shock, Feng Yu Hen helplessly waved to her, come here. Only then did Xiang Rong recover and quickly walk in. Going directly to a cup, she poured herself some tea and downed a mouthful. Feng Yu Hen helplessly shook her head then informed Huang Guain, go to the ready-made clothing store next door and buy some clothes for third young miss. She then pointed out the window and said to Xiang Rong, look, Feng Chen Yu has already arrived. Sure enough, in the direction that she pointed, there was a prison carriage slowly arriving. There was a person inside with scattered hair and a set of prison clothes that stuck to her body thanks to the rain. Looking from far away, it was possible to see a trace of grace in her body. Was Feng Jinyuan on the verge of crying? Feng Yuhen smiled and picked up a pork shoulder up from the plate on the table, the daughter that he loved the most is about to be executed, and the manner of execution is being cut at the waist. I fear that he must be causing a fuss back at the manor, right? Xiang Rong nodded, it's not just a fuss. I just don't understand. In his heart, his eldest sister the only one that is his daughter, and the rest of us were just picked up. Feng Yuhen laughed. I really do hope that I was just picked up. She waved her hand and had no intention of saying more. At this time, Huang Quain had returned. There aren't any good clothes that could be bought at the ready-made clothes shop. Third young miss, just make do with this for now. It would be better than wearing those wet clothes. Huang Quain was very thorough and had even purchased underclothes. Xiang Rong, however, asked Feng Yu Heng. How much longer until the execution? Feng Yuhen said, soon. Then I will get changed after watching. Her eyes were resolute, and she stared firmly at the stage. She was unwilling to look away for even an instant. Feng Yuhen nodded and had Huang Quain put the clothes to the side. The few then gathered around the window to look outside together. It was said to be soon, but there were still procedures that had to be completed. Upon arriving at the stage, the criminal's identification number first needed to be reported. Their body would then be examined. Their eight characters would then be written on a small sign and stuck to their body. Only then could the criminal be brought onto the stage. Execution by being cut at the waist required a very large tool, and it looked like a door frame made of wood, as it stood tall on the execution stage. At the top, there was a blade dangling. The arch faced down, and it was very sharp. The two sides of the blade were held up by ropes, and the ropes were held down by two large rocks. It was clear that the blade was extremely heavy. Without two rocks holding them down, it would be impossible to hold the blade up. During the execution, the criminal would be placed facing down on the chopping block under the blade. After making sure that the waist was under the blade, with instructions from the executioner, the two rocks would be moved and the heavy blade would fall straight down. Like cutting a dumpling, 
it would cut the person below into two parts. The person that had just been executed would not die immediately. For a moment, they would remain conscious. The executioner would then bring the criminal's lower half up to the front for the criminal to see. This provocation would take the last breath from the criminal. Only then would they be completely dead. This was the first time Feng Yu Heng had seen this sort of execution. There was nothing that she feared. She just felt that it was a bit fresh. Xiang Rong trembled slightly. It was unclear whether it was from fear or the cold, but her gaze was unwilling to move the entire time. Feng Yu Hen propped her chin on both her hands and continued to watch. At this time, Xiu An Ming happened to look up at her. Their eyes met, and she happily waved down at him, mouthing, Hi. Xiu An Ming did not understand what hi meant, but he knew that it was a greeting, thus he turned his head and gave an order to Bei Iz. Bei Iz then covered himself in a cloak and headed toward the restaurant. Not long later, he moved to the second floor. In front of the private room's door, he said to Feng Yu Heng, Princess. His Highness said that he has not eaten all morning. He asks that Princess leave a little later, and to eat with him here. While saying this, he looked at the pork shoulder in Feng Yu Heng's hand and said, His Highness also said it looks like the pork shoulder that you are eating was quite nice, and he wanted this subordinate to bring some back for him. Feng Yu Hen rolled her eyes. So he had been sent to take her delicious food. Very reluctantly, she had Bei Izi take the remaining pork shoulder away along with the plate. When she turned back around, she expressed her displeasure with Xu Tan Ming. At this time, she heard Wang Quan say, It seems that it's about to begin. Their attention was drawn back onto the execution stage. They saw that Feng Chen Yu had already been held down on the chopping block. She continued to struggle, and someone used a long rope to tie her down, making her completely unable to move. Immediately following this, they saw Xu An Ming write some things on the sign for a while. Just as it was about time for the execution, he suddenly flashed a sinister smile toward Feng Yu Heng. He then gave a forceful order to carry out the execution, using his inner strength to shout, Execute! The word execute penetrated the sounds of the heavy rain in all directions. Even the people on the second floor of the restaurant could hear it clearly. Following the order, the large blade that had been hanging there was finally let loose. Falling at an extremely quick rate. With a thunk the girl below was cut into two parts. Chapter 433, Escaping Disaster The Feng family's eldest daughter, Feng Chen Yu, finally succeeded in dying after her repeated activities that courted death. Watching her be cut at the waist, Feng Yuhen did not seem to rejoice much. She just finished eating then wiped her hands with a towel before saying to herself, Feng Chen Yu's era has come to an end. Xiang Rong was still standing in front of the window, and she was still staring at the corpse that had been cut into two parts. She watched people carry the body away as the heavy rain quickly washed away the blood. Second sister. The little girl whispered, I finally understand what you meant before. A person must rely on themselves to live, and the type of heart that one has will determine the type of life one would live. Second sister, I want to cancel this engagement. Father is no longer the prime minister, and I can no longer assume the position of General Bu's official wife. Rather than waiting for him to cancel it, it would be better if I went to cancel it on my own. While saying this, she looked at Feng Yu Heng. It looked as though she was asking for her opinion. Feng Yu Heng did not have many opinions, only telling her, you can make the decision on your own. Feng Jin Yuan is nothing more than a standard fifth rank official. Even if he wishes to seek connections with the Bu family, the Bu family would not be willing. Xiang Rong added. Second sister, I also want to move out. Say, will father agree? Feng Yu Hen laughed, what does it matter if he agrees or not? Unless he sends people to tie you up and bring you back, and even if he did, you can fight back, right? Xiang Rong nodded, I saved up a bit of money for myself. Second sister, can you help me find a place to live? Feng Yu Hen reached out and patted the girl's small head. What's the need to find a place to live? Just move into the county princess manor. 
I would like to see just how much ability Feng Jinyuan has to come to my county princess manor to take someone away. Xiang Rong immediately expressed herself, then I would need to pay. The two sisters happily chatted. At this time, they heard a very sarcastic female voice from the room next door, their own elder sister was executed. Why are you still so happy? Seventh brother, what are their hearts made of? It was Yu Qian Yin. Xiu Antan who did not speak. Huang Quan was a little angry. Taking a couple steps over, she shouted at the barrier between the two rooms, if you have the ability, come and say it to our face. What is the point of speaking behind the backs of others? The other room fell silent for a moment. Not long later, the sound of footsteps arrived in front of the door. The door opened, and it was Xiu An Tan Ming. Feng Yuhen pointed next door and said to him, Did you see seventh brother? Xiu An Tan Ming nodded but said, He already left with that girl. Huang Quan furrowed her brow and asked in confusion, What exactly is that girl doing? Xiu An Tan Ming very frankly said, I don't know. He then sat straight down next to his wife. Ignoring Xiang Rong, who had bowed to pay respects to him, he said to Feng Yuheng, a report came from the Board of Astronomy last night. This rainfall will continue for ten days. When he spoke, he no longer had the carefree expression as when he had sent someone to take her food. In fact, he did not even mention Feng Chen Yu's matter. Furrowing his brow, he was worried about this rainfall. With the rain falling as it did, Feng Yuhen had also been worried. Hearing that it would rain for another ten days, worry also appeared on her face. She had not forgotten the crisis that had been brought to the capital and its surroundings by the heavy snowfall during winter. She had not forgotten about the people that had frozen to death. At that time, Although she had done her best to alleviate the disaster, there were still things that she could not manage. If a crisis with snow became like that, what about a flood? She also furrowed her brow, saying, the heavy rain will cause mountain torrents, and these mountain torrents will cause landslides. What's most worrying is what comes after the disaster. With the hot days, if corpses are not taken care of properly, they will rot and spread disease. When the time comes, the disease would have spread, and that would be a major problem. Xiu An Tan Ming nodded. That is precisely what I am worried about. Feng Yuhen suddenly thought of the military camp and quickly asked, What about the military camp? He patted her shoulder and comforted her, saying, There's no problem at the military camp. That site has already dug some drainage ditches in order to prevent flooding. The hand that was on her shoulder slightly tightened. Xiu An Tan Ming stood up and told Feng Yuheng, you should go home. I will be going into the palace. Feng Yuheng also stood up, anxiously asking, didn't you say that you haven't eaten yet? He waved his hand, I will go into the palace to eat. She knew that he was anxious about the disaster, thus she did not remain for too long. Bringing the group along, everyone left the restaurant and got into their separate carriages. One went to the imperial palace and one went to the county princess manor. At this time, the rituals at the Feng manor continued. The masters continued to mutter sutras that could not be understood, and the room was filled with lit candles. He Zong once again ran into the hall. With a bitter expression, he said to Feng Jin Yuan, Master, the person that had been sent out has returned. Eldest young miss has already been executed. Feng Jin Yuan's body swayed and he fell to the ground. At the same time, the masters raised the funeral banner in their hands, and their voices became louder. The matriarch had also lost her composure. Fortunately, she did not place as much hope and feelings into Chen Yu as Feng Jin Yuan. At this time, she was still able to maintain her sense of reason. She spoke to everyone in the room, you can cry. In any case, cry a bit. It's just the sentiment. That will keep that girl from dying with remaining grievances and coming back to cause us trouble. The servants had received the order and quickly let out some cries. Although there were not many that truly let out any tears, the sound was not lacking. Especially some of the more frightened servants that had been scared by Feng Chen Yu's execution, they cried quite loudly. 
This caused Feng Jinyuan to feel a little bit satisfied. Feng Yuhen brought Xiang Rong back to the county princess manor. Upon entering the room, she immediately had servants bring in new clothes. Feng Yuhen hurried Xiang Rong, change into my clothes first. The manor has a tailor. I will have her come and prepare you some new clothes. Xiang Rong shook her head, I can just go to the Feng Manor to fetch my clothes. Feng Yuhen helplessly told her a truth, first of all, there's no guarantee that you can return to the Feng Manor. Rather, it would be more accurate to say that if you go back, don't hold out hope that you can come back. Also, even if the Feng family does not cause you any trouble, you also heard it earlier. This rainfall will continue for ten days. With such heavy rain, what's the point of going through all of this trouble? Xiang Rong did not continue to insist, only saying, thank you, second sister for taking me in, but Xiang Rong must pay. Xiang Rong does not want to continue being a useless person that needs to be protected by second sister. She nodded and very frankly said, that's fine. She then said to Wang Kun, bringing you with you to the Bumana. Cancel the engagement for the third young miss. Hearing the words cancel the engagement, a look of elation appeared in Xiang Rong's eyes. The feeling was similar to what a person sentenced to death would feel after suddenly having a second lease on life. She patted the back of Xiang Rong's hand and said to her, I have helped you cancel this engagement. You will need to be the one to walk down the path from now on. I understand what you are thinking and I can help provide you with an opportunity, however, it's impossible for me to force that person to do anything. Do you understand? Xiang Rong knew that she was talking about the seventh prince, Xiu An Tan Hu. Her cheeks blushed slightly, however, she immediately recovered and nodded seriously, telling her, second sister, I understand. Just like that, she began living at the county princess manor. The Feng family received this news and also received the news from the Bu family. Feng Jinyuan did not care which side cancelled the engagement first. He clearly understood that he was a fifth rank official and did not have the standing to place Xiang Rong as the official wife of Bu Kong. But with Feng Yuheng acting as a shield, even if he wanted to, he could not even try to push Xiang Rong into the position of concubine. The masters at the Feng family continued throughout the night and only left on the day after. Feng Jinyuan sent a few groups of servants out to inquire to see if Chen Yu's body could be brought back to be buried. Unfortunately, the news that was brought back was, the government has said that criminals that have been executed are not permitted to be brought back by the family. The corpse has already been taken outside the city and tossed into an unmarked grave. Seeing that Feng Jinyuan was about to faint, the matriarch reminded him, if you brought her back, where would you bury her? In such heavy rain, we cannot even leave the city, so where would she be buried? Moreover, the old home no longer recognizes this branch. Could it be that you want to bring that little slut back to Feng Tong County? Feng Jinyuan covered his face with his hands and sat on the ground. He could not help but sigh. The matriarch reminded him, if you have the time, it would be better to go to the southwest side of the capital to take a look at how big our new manor will be. With all of us moving over, will we all be able to fit? Feng Jinyuan feared the matriarch saying this the most. The past few days, he could avoid it. But when he calculated the days, it seemed that Zhang Yuan would be coming to the manor today. Upon thinking of this, he immediately leapt up and rushed to say, I will go take a look. Saying this, he walked toward the gate. Jin Zhen was worried about him, saying, it's raining so hard outside. There's no rush for husband to do this, right? It's too dangerous. Cheng Jun Man also reminded him, saying, last time, the exchange of deeds was not completed, and Yunak Jiang did not say where exactly the residence would be in the southwest. Even if husband went, you would not be able to find it. Even if you found it, you would not be able to go in. This reminder caused Feng Jinyuan to give up. The matriarch was unable to understand, on that day, why did you not exchange the deeds with Yunak Jiang? Feng Jinyuan said, was it not because we wanted to perform a ritual for Chen Yu? Would the ritual affect the deed? 
it's not like we were being pressed to move out. With you delaying like this, we cannot even get a look at the residence beforehand. Feng Jinyuan really did not want to continue talking about this subject, thus he quickly mentioned Chen Yu, deliberately going to order the servants. Quickly prepare white cloth to be hung up. Also, bring out the filial headbands to begin mourning the eldest young miss. Chen Jun Man furrowed her brow and said to the matriarch, the family is not permitted to perform a funeral for someone that has been executed. This is a rule of the court. The matriarch nodded, that's right. The rules of the court must not be broken. The Feng family will not perform a funeral. Feng Jinyuan knew that this was a rule of the court and could not insist, however, he took a step back and said, then at least of her courtyard's servants wear more plain clothes. The matriarch did not argue with this point, only saying, just the intention is enough. Have the servants from her courtyard wear white for three days. After those three days, lay off all of the servants from that courtyard. She then looked at Feng Jinyuan and said to him, bring the deed out and hand it to Jun Man. In the future, the deed will be left to Jun Man to take care of. Feng Jinyuan trembled, and his expression became a little ugly. Cheng Jun Mei seemed to have understood something and could not help but ask, why is it that husband looks a little off whenever the deed is mentioned? Just as Feng Jinyuan wanted to refute this, He Zong braved the rain and hastily rushed into the hall. He anxiously said, Elder Madam, Master, a flood has occurred at the old home in Feng Tong County. The people that escaped have come to the capital to seek shelter. They have already arrived at the manor's gates. Chapter 434, Town Leader Became the Third Fatty. Ever since their last trip to pay respects to their ancestors, although Feng Jinyuan had not been removed from the genealogical records, the old clan elder had also said that it would be best if they did not interact in the future. Even Feng Jinyuan's grandfather's grave could be taken away by them at any time, as long as they wanted to. At first, Feng Jinyuan thought that they would never be able to return in this lifetime, and he thought even more that there would no longer be any interaction with the people from the old home. Who knew that the other side would take the initiative to come and visit them? He snorted and said, at that time, their words were so proud. When they chased us away, they did not give us any face. Now that they've been affected by a disaster, they have the face to come and seek us out. The matriarch was also a little unhappy. At that time, she had been scolded by the clan elder, completely tearing away at her face. Who knew that the situation would turn, and the people from the old Feng family would finally need to come and beg her. What sort of people have come? The matriarch asked He Zong, has the clan elder personally come? He Zong shook his head, the clan elder did not come. The ones that came were second granduncle and third granduncle. They also brought along some children. Altogether, there are over ten people. He Zong was a little troubled, Elder Madam, there are over ten people. The matriarch did not react for a while, what's wrong with the being over ten people? Cheng Jun Man reminded them from the side, since they have been affected by a disaster, they must have come to us to seek shelter. They will certainly ask to stay here. If this was under normal circumstances, it would be fine. The manor would be able to handle over ten people. Now, however, we are about to move out. Apparently, the other residence is very small. The matriarch slapped herself on the head, what should we do? Cheng Jun Mei said, we cannot have them wait at the entrance. We should go out and take a look. People had come from the old home. The matriarch naturally had to go and receive them. With the matriarch going, everyone else followed. Aside from the pregnant Han Shi, who was left behind, the rest of the people in the Feng Manor went over. Even An Shi, who had been untied, also went out. The servants held up numerous umbrellas to block the rain for their masters, but it was raining too heavily. How could umbrellas block it all? In fact, some of the umbrellas became tattered by the wind. When everyone finally managed to reach the front gate, they saw the adults and children standing outside. There was even one child that was crying loudly. Feng Jinyuan quickened his pace slightly and greeted the two older guys, second granduncle, third granduncle. 
The two elderly men looked to be in their sixties. Having been soaked by the rain, they looked to be in a very difficult situation. Their backs were slightly bent. Having escaped the disaster, their shoes had become tattered. Upon seeing Feng Jinyuan, the older one quickly said, We finally met you. Along the way here, a large number of people died. If we did not reach the capital, I fear that this old bag of bones would have also passed away. The matriarch glanced at him and asked coldly, Why are you in such a sorry state? The man let out a sigh and replied, Not to hide it from sister-in-law, but Feng Tong County has suffered from torrential rains for over a month, which finally led to a flood. The ancestral home has been washed away, and we desperately escaped from that place, however, plenty of people still died. Feng Jinyuan asked him, Where's the clan elder? Upon asking about the clan elder, the large group fell silent. Even the child that was crying stopped making any sounds. The third grand uncle picked up on this subject, the clan elder told us to escape to the capital and come to seek shelter from you. He himself went up the mountain, saying saying that he wanted to die with the family ancestors. While saying this, he squatted down and put down the bundle that he had been carrying. The third grand uncle continued, saying, these are the memorial tablets for the ancestors. Clan Elder said that it is not easy for you to be establishing a foothold in the capital. Although we are escaping a disaster, we cannot cause you any trouble. That's why our meaning is if it's convenient for you to take us in, we will stay. If it's inconvenient, we will search for another place. But these memorial tablets, we hope, can be left here. In any case, you have an ancestral hall here. We can cause grief to anyone, but we cannot cause grief for our ancestors. Upon hearing these words, the matriarch felt that she truly did not have any face left. They had come from far away to escape a disaster. How could they not take them in? If word were to spread, what would become of the Feng family? Thus she quickly said, it's convenient. How could it be inconvenient? In such a large manner, how could it not house this many people? Cheng Jun Man also nodded, saying, with it raining so heavily outside, where else can you go? Just stay here. In any case, wait until the rain has stopped. The matriarch and Cheng Jun Man had spoken, thus Feng Jinyuan could not say anything else. Although he sighed repeatedly to himself, he still had to welcome them into the manor. Upon hearing that they could stay, the children were extremely happy. Kneeling on the ground, they kowtowed to Feng Jinyuan. This caused Feng Jinyuan to feel even more embarrassed to say that they could not stay, thus everyone returned to Peony Courtyard's main hall. For a while, the hall was very full. Cheng Jun Man took the initiative to arrange, right now, there happen to be a few courtyards that are empty. Kang Yi, Rujia and Chen Yu's courtyards can all be lived in. Right now. There is no time to tidy up too much. Just live in them directly. At the same time, she ordered the servants, quickly go boil some water to prepare baths for the guests saying this, she turned to the second grand uncle, it's raining heavily outside, so it's not quite possible to buy fabric and have a tailor come. All that we can do is give you some of husband's clothes for now. I hope that the two grand uncles will not dislike them. The second grand uncle waved his hand, it's fine, we do not dislike it. Being able to stay is already fortuitous. Where is there any need to pick new clothes? Also, with it raining so heavily outside, it would be best if nobody went outside. A young child said, on our way here, we saw someone fall into a muddy ditch and be unable to climb out. Even the carriage sank into the mud. The matriarch became worried upon hearing this. Is the flooding very severe in Feng Tong County? The second grand uncle nodded, it's not just severe. The entire Feng Tong County is gone. Feng Jinyuan was a little shocked. Feng Tong County was not a very small county. For the flood to be able to ruin the entire county, what was the situation outside? He had been a prime minister for many years. To say that he did not care about the citizens of the country was impossible. Otherwise, the emperor would not have kept him in the position of prime minister for that many years. 
Now that he heard that the situation of the flood was so severe, Feng Jinyuan felt a little restless, however, he had already been demoted to fifth rank. What could he do even if he was restless? Seeing Cheng Jun Man methodically arrange the memorial tablets, Feng Jinyuan suddenly became absent-minded. He was thinking that if Chen Yu's matter did not occur, with the Empress' two nieces as his wives and him still being in the position of Prime Minister, there would be no need to move out. How great would that be? With the people from the old home arriving, there would not be any need to feel so distressed. They could properly take care of them while gaining a good reputation. The look of regret was clear on his face. The matriarch saw it and scoffed, if you know to feel regret now, what are you doing earlier? If you diverted your feeling for Chen Yu to A Heng, our Feng family would have anything that it wanted. Anyone that went out would have a great deal of prestige. Unfortunately, Feng Jinyuan did not have this consciousness. In his eyes, this was all caused by Feng Yu Heng, thus he reminded the matriarch, if there was no Feng Yu Heng hindering my plans, Chen Yu would not have died. The matriarch knew that there was no point in reasoning with this son, thus she simply decided not to waste words. She directly said to him, go get the deed. Although it is raining heavily, I figure that Yunuk Jiang will still be coming. When that time comes, exchange it with him. We can then go over and tidy things up. Feng Jinyuan feared her bringing up the deed the most. When the matriarch brought this up, he did not dare look at her. He just turned around and looked out at the rain, muttering, with it raining so heavily, is it possible for us to move? These words were the truth. The matriarch also sighed, only saying, I just hope that the palace will not rush us too much. At the very least, wait until the rain has stopped. At this time in the county princess manor, a man dressed in a light purple robe and wearing a gold mask on his face stood in Feng Yuhen's bedroom. Facing the girl sitting on a table, swinging her legs, he loudly said, a girl should pay attention to her appearance. All of the other girls are humble and well raised. Look at yourself. The person on the table became unhappy, what's wrong with me? Did you not like me because I am like this? Ever since the day we met, I could pull you from a crevice in the mountain with my two thin arms. Which humble girl have you ever seen with that sort of ability? Little Ming, a person must not be too picky. The face covered by the golden mask quickly rushed over and said with a flattering tone, I'm not picky, I'm not picky. This prince's meaning was to say that we are people with proper backgrounds, right? When eating grapes, how could we peel them ourselves? The person on the table nodded. If you say it like that, I quite like hearing it. That's fine, then you peel them for me. What? A certain person's lips twitched, what's the point of having so many maid servants? If I leave everything to the maid servants to do, what do I have you for? She reached out and hooked her arm around his neck, be good. They're sweeter when you peel them. With these words, a certain person accepted his fate and sat down next to her, quietly peeling grapes for her. When Wang Kun and Huang Quain entered the room, they saw the two masters sitting on the table their legs swaying slowly. One was eating grapes, and the other was peeling grapes. Their young miss even said, Xu An Ming, if you can get the seeds out too, that would be even better. The two servants' faces were covered in dark lines, saying to themselves that only Feng Yuhen dared to do this sort of thing. Only Feng Yuhen dared to say this sort of thing. If it was anyone else, just wait and see if the ninth prince would whip them. Huang Quain walked over quickly, arriving in front of the two, and said, the kitchen has already prepared dinner. Your highness should stay and eat too. Xu An Tenming nodded, saying very naturally, with it raining so hard, this prince will definitely need to stay here to eat. While saying this, he turned to look out the window. The sound of rain was very loud coming through the partially opened window. He then added, if the rain does not let up. I will also spend the night here. Feng Yuheng glared at him sideways, why do you not treat yourself as an outsider? Xu An Tenming leaned closer to her side, I was never an outsider. It's not the first time that we have slept together. Saying this, he asked the two servants, right? Wang Quan nodded, right. 
Feng Yuhen rolled her eyes at him but did not say anything. It was raining so heavily outside, but Xu An Taming had taken the risk to come and see her. After eating, it would be dark outside. How could she bear to chase him out? Seeing that Feng Yuhen had no objections, Wang Kun changed the subject, telling her about the things that had happened in the Feng Manor. She also told her, the news was brought by the older Madame Cheng. In regards to the Chengxi sisters, Tong Sheng Pavilion gave them a bit of respect. After all, there were the Empress nieces, and they were also people that stood on Feng Yuhen's side. Wang Kun and Huang Quang referred to them as older Madame Cheng and second Madame Cheng. Feng Yuhen asked her, is the situation at Feng Tong County very severe? Xu An Tanming picked up on this topic, that place is lower, and it is surrounded by mountains. There is no need to fear floods. What is to be feared are mudslides. Even the Board of Astronomy says that the rains this year are not normal. I fear that the disaster will not be small. Feng Yuhen thought for a while then gently raised the corner of her lips, since Feng Jinyuan has already gone from being a town leader to being the third fatty, we cannot hit him from the front. As I see it, how about we aid the poor? T.N. The third fatty being referred to here is probably Kim Jong-un. I believe she's calling him a tyrant. Chapter 435, County Princess Gives Gifts. County Princess Jin grants the guests from Fen Tong 18 main dishes, 6 cold dishes and 4 soups. County Princess Jin grants the guests from Feng Tong 32 bolts of fabric for clothing and the County Princess Manor's tailor to make the clothing. County Princess Jin grants the guests from Feng Tong one fruit pastry each. County Princess Jin grants the guests from Feng Tong 100 dollars of silver each. The Feng Manor began dinner with this announcement, as large amounts of servants from Tong Sheng Pavilion entered the dining room. All of them wore very odd clothes and shoes. The clothes were made from some unknown material that was see-through and came with a hat. Both men and women wore the same thing with their clothes underneath. The shoes that they wore were boots, and they were also made of an unknown material, however, no matter if it was the clothes or boots, they were completely waterproof. Like this, they walked around in the rain without umbrellas, and they did not look to be in a bad state. The things were brought over by King Yu. The dishes were placed on the table, and she turned to salute the matriarch and the grand uncles. Only then did she say, County Princess heard that guests have come, thus she informed the manor's chef to prepare some food to be sent over here. With the recent heavy rain, the families that usually send food into the city have been blocked. The capital has not had any fresh food deliveries in a few days. County Princess was thinking that the Feng Manor would definitely be suffering shortages. Fortunately, the County Princess Manor has a reserve in the cellar. Thus the food was prepared and sent over. While saying this, she looked at the table. Before the food that they had brought was placed on the table, even pickled vegetables were not present. This truly was not a normal level of shabbiness. The matriarch and Feng Jinyuan's faces were a little black, but they had to admit that the Feng family did indeed not have many reserves. They had plenty of grains, as there was a large amount saved up, and it could be preserved, however, vegetables and meat were not things that could be kept for long periods of time. For this large family to eat, they had run out a long time ago. At first, they were thinking that if they still could not buy vegetables for another few days, they would need to eat pickled vegetables every day. The people from the old home knew that Feng Yuhen was a county princess. Earlier, Feng Jinyuan had said that county princess had her own manor, and since it was raining so heavily, he would not call her over to eat together. Who knew that girl would be so kind and actually send food over? The second granduncle and third granduncle quickly stood up to kneel and give thanks, but they were stopped by King Yu, would the two elders please not be so courteous? County Princess said that the Feng family is in mourning today and feared that official Feng would not be in the mood to take care of the guests. She would have to put in some effort to ensure that nobody suffers any grievances. While saying this, she pointed at the bolts of cloth and continued, the County Princess Manor has a tailor ready. This servant has already brought her over. When you have finished dinner, we will have her take everyone's measurements to make your clothes. 
all of the expenses will be taken care of by the county princess manor. Also, she took out some bank notes and handed them to the second grand uncle, each bank note is worth 100 dollars of silver. Every person gets one. Please take care of them. There is also some shattered silver for everyone to use normally. The second grand uncle's eyes became moist, a hen that's not right. County princess really was thorough in her thinking. The Feng family taking us in was already a grand grace. Who knew that she would be so kind? It's no loss that she is the Feng family's daughter of the first wife. Good. Good. While the second grand uncle was praising Feng Yu Hen with tears in his eyes, the third grand uncle seemed to have heard something that was off, anxiously asking, What did you just say? The Feng family is in mourning? Puzzled. He looked around but did not see any trace of a sad atmosphere. Ever since entering the manor, there was not a single person that mentioned mourning. What did these words mean? King Yu was startled for a moment then immediately looked at the matriarch. She then slapped her own forehead, it seems that this servant spoke too much. Third grand uncle, please treat it as though this servant did not say anything. Do not inquire any further. After she finished speaking, she handed over the banknotes and shattered silver in her hand and said, If there are any other needs, send someone to the county princess manor to say something. This servant will be leaving first. After King Yi finished speaking, she quickly led everyone out. They were still wearing their weird clothes and weird shoes, as they rushed into the rain, moving very freely. For a while, everyone was in a daze. The third grand uncle, however, was still worried about earlier and asked, what is the matter with the morning? The matriarch saw that the matter could not be hidden and helplessly sighed. She then glanced at Cheng Jun Man. Cheng Jun Man understood what she meant, thus she spoke up and recounted what had happened with Chen Yu. She was very smart and concealed things. She did not reveal the exact reason, only saying that she had angered the emperor and was executed, while Feng Jinyuan was demoted to fifth rank. The people from the old home never could have expected that this sort of change would occur. For a while, they did not know what they should do. At this time inside the county princess manor, Xiu An Tanming was eating a large pork shoulder with Feng Yu Heng. After trying a few times, he found that he could not defeat his wife and helplessly gave up. He frankly spoke about an official matter. The flood of Feng Tong County has given me an idea. Feng Yu Hen picked at the skin on the pork shoulder while asking him, What idea? He said, I fear that Qian Zhu's matter cannot be hidden for much longer, and we still need time to produce steel. Sending out troops immediately is not wise, thus I was thinking of sending those criminals back to Qian Zhu in this rain. Along the way, it would be useful for them to die in a flood. Feng Yu Heng's eyes lit up and stared attentively at Xu An Ming, that could work. To be able to think of such a mean method. Of course. Xu An Ming sat up straight. What do you think of this idea? Feng Yu Hen nodded, it's really quite good. But the people sending them must be reliable. We cannot lose the lives of anyone from Da Shun for the sake of sending them along. It's not worth it. Xu An Ming thought a bit. Have hidden guards go. He then raised his hand, Banzu, come out. Banzu appeared in front of the two, Your Highness, Master. Xu An Tenming ordered him, Bring along six other people and come with this prince into the palace tomorrow. Banzu nodded, This subordinate obeys. Xu An Tenming then waved his hand, Then you can leave. Banzu quietly disappeared in a flash. This meal. Feng Yu Hen ate a large pork shoulder, four ribs, half a fish, six shrimp, two large meatballs and a pigeon. Xu An Tenming was helpless, can you not eat some vegetables? A certain person spoke very naturally, I am not a rabbit. She then asked Huang Quain, where's Xiang Rong? Huang Quain told her, third young miss said that she would not be disturbing your time with his highness. She went to eat with madam. Feng Yu Heng thought about it and felt that this was also good. Yao Shi eating on her own would be quite bored. With Xiang Rong accompanying her, she would be acting as the daughter and being filial for her. She sighed repeatedly. 
In regards to Yao Shi, there were times when she really could not do anything. For dinner, the county princess manor enjoyed a joyful and rich meal, while there was nobody in the mood to eat on the Feng family's side. Chen Yu's death caused the people that had come from the old home to feel shocked. Everyone knew that she was the most beautiful daughter in the Feng family. They had once discussed it and said that she would definitely have a good future, however, they did not think that the beauty would pass away during her best years immediately after she became of age. It truly caused them to sigh emotionally. Feng Jinyuan used this opportunity to express his own thoughts, as he pointed at the table of food, saying, Feng Yuhen gave you some food, some fabric and some money, giving you all a good impression. Who knew that if it was not for her secretly harming her eldest sister, Chen Yu would not have suffered this crisis, and I would not have been demoted to fifth rank. And how could the Feng family have not been able to protect this residence? The more he said, the angrier he became. In the end, he slapped the table and loudly said, it's all because of that little beast. Sooner or later, she will cause the destruction of the Feng family. This shout was a little too loud. It was loud enough that it was heard by someone that was far away but was about to enter the hall, as a shrill voice suddenly spoke up, who is it that official Feng is cursing? Everyone in the Feng family was extremely shocked and turned their heads in unison. They saw a group of people walking in from the outside. At the front was eunuch Zhang Yuan, but his style was too imposing. A single eunuch actually had four people surrounding him and holding up a large canopy. This protected him very thoroughly, ensuring that he would not be soaked by the rain. Feng Jinyuan squinted his eyes and looked for a moment then very quickly recognized it. The canopy belonged to the emperor. Every time that there was a heavy rain, it would be brought out and used. Who knew that the emperor's personal thing would actually be used by a eunuch? It was clear how well the emperor treated Jiang Yuan. He quickly stood up, and the matriarch also stood up. At the same time, she gave the two grand uncles a look, quietly saying, His Majesty's personal eunuch. Once everyone heard this, they quickly stood up. Although he was just a eunuch, he had come from the palace, and he was the emperor's personal eunuch. Naturally, his standing was out of the ordinary. Just as everyone stood up, Zhang Yuan had already walked into the hall. Looking inside, he casually said, Oh! There are quite a few people. He then stopped at the sill and pointed at Feng Jin Yuan's face. Without wasting words, he said, Official Feng, we came to exchange the deeds. Feng Jin Yuan had a troubled expression, saying, Eunuch Zhang also saw it. With the rain being like it is, how can we move? Can it wait until it has calmed down, at least until the rain has stopped? Otherwise, the family full of old he turned around and pointed around, especially at the people that had come from the old home, saying, Look, these are people that have escaped the disaster at the old home in Feng Ton County. The entire county has been ruined by the flood. They managed to reach the capital with a great deal of difficulty. They are either elderly or too young. Moving in the rain would truly cause this prime cause this official to feel it unbearable. Zhang Yuan nodded, His Majesty already knows about this matter, and people have been sent to handle the disaster. In regards to Feng Tong County, there will naturally be steps to correct this matter. There is no need for Lord Feng to worry. Also, His Majesty has said that there is indeed no way to move in such heavy rain, thus there is no rush and he will not ask for rent from official Feng. But the deed must be exchanged today. This is to save me many trips out of the palace. You also know that there are many things going on in the palace. We do not even have enough time to take care of his majesty. How could there be time to constantly be coming out here? Feng Jin Yuan anxiously said, then I will not trouble Yunuk Jiang with coming out. This official will send it into the palace. Oh. Zhang Yuan let out a laugh, official Feng must be joking. Right now, you are a standard fifth rank official. You do not have the right to enter the palace at any time. This Feng Jin Yuan was in a panic, and some sweats appeared on his brow. He repeatedly rubbed his hands together. An Shi asked, husband, are you cold? He glared at An Shi with cold eyes then stomped his foot and said, fine. 
Eunuch, please wait a moment. The deed has been left in the study. This official will personally go and fetch it. It has been said that Old Seventh likes Hen Heng, Chapter 436, can this sort of thing be called a father? Feng Jinyuan left the hall. When he returned, he had brought a deed. He handed the deed in his hand to Jiang Yuan, and Jiang Yuan received it then looked at it. He then handed another deed to Feng Jinyuan, Lord Feng, take care of it. This matter shall be considered resolved. Since the heavy rain has not stopped, His Majesty said that the Feng family can continue staying here for a few more days. You shall move when the rain has let up a little. The Feng family gave thanks for this grace then watched Jiang Yuan arrogantly strutted off, leaving the Feng manor under the Emperor's canopy. Fen Dai casually remarked, he's just a eunuch, but why does he seem even more arrogant than a prince? The matriarch glared at her, disaster stems from words that were said. Shut your mouth. This gave Fen Dai a fright, rendering her too scared to say another word. Cheng Jun Man glanced at Feng Jinyuan and directly noticed that he was feeling a little shaken. The deed had become crumpled in his hands, and his knuckles had become white from being clenched too tightly. She raised the corner of her lips and said, Husband, take care of the deed. Do not ruin it. Only then did Feng Jinyuan recover, quickly straightening the deed. He then said to the matriarch, Right now, there is no need to think about anything. Everything can wait until after the rain has stopped. The matriarch nodded. She also knew that they could not leave until the rain had stopped. She could only take care of everyone and have them continue eating. Feng Jinyuan, however, had his own thoughts. The next day, Xiu An Tanming left the county princess manor after eating breakfast, bringing Banzu directly over to the imperial palace. Feng Yuhen lazed about in bed for a while. Just as she was about to get up, Wang Quan entered and told her, Lord Feng has arrived. She furrowed her brow, why did he come here again? Wang Quan said, older madam brought news saying that eunuch Jiang came to the Feng manor yesterday during dinner time. He exchanged deeds with Lord Feng. Exchanged? Feng Yuhen frowned, where did he get a deed to exchange? Wang Quan shook her head, saying, this is not too clear but the older madam said that Lord Feng did indeed exchange the Feng Manor's deed with Eunuch Jiang for the deed of the manors in the southwest side. Feng Yuhen pondered for a while and whispered to herself, he shouldn't have created a fake to fool them, right? She then stood up, let's go take a look. When she arrived, Feng Jinyuan had already waited in the hall for a while. Seeing Feng Yuhen come out, Feng Jinyuan felt a surprising anger well up. No matter how he looked at this daughter, he felt irritated, and his words became thorny. Do you not even pay attention to the time? For you to have only just gotten up, you really do lack discipline. Feng Yuhen shrugged and walked over to the main seat. While sipping on tea, she said, I am in my own manner. I can get up whenever I want to get up. If you cannot get used to it, just get out. Feng Jinyuan slammed the table in anger. Pointing at Feng Yu Heng, he continued, You still have not married, yet you kept a man at your manor. The Feng family's face has been completely lost by you. Oh! Feng Yu Heng let out a laugh, the Feng family still had a face to lose. Feng Chen Yu losing her virtue before her marriage has already become a matter of laughter for the entire capital. Just how much face does your Feng family have that this did not cause it to be completely lost? To be able to leave some for me? The more she said, the more she felt it was funny. If you truly feel that Xu An Tming living here is not good, go to the Yu Palace to talk about it. Or go into the palace to face his majesty. Make sure to properly tell Father Emperor about it alright, how embarrassing. I forgot. You no longer have the right to enter the palace as you please, official Feng. Feng Jin Yu An no longer had the energy to get angry. He just accepted his fate and looked at Feng Yu Heng. He suddenly found that he was on the verge of no longer being able to even raise his head in front of this daughter. Her words and laughter, and even just his single movement could cause him to collapse. As for the Feng family, if it wanted to continue, it would need to rely on this daughter. But he was still a little unwilling to accept this. He stared at Feng Yu Heng and asked, 
Now, you aren't even willing to call me father? Feng Yuhen retracted her smile, and her gaze became cold, father. She muttered this, but it was not calling him. It was as though she was thinking of something. After a long while, she finally said, it seems that I truly do not understand the definition of father. Everyone says that the father is a god to their children. They provide a good life and future for their children, but my father, however, tried all kinds of methods to take my life, and he protects the other people that tried to harm me and my little brother. This sort of thing, can it be called a father? Feng Jinyuan felt his face go hot. Feng Yuhen's words were like knives that cut viciously at his face. He did not have time to dodge, and he could not dodge them. He could only endure it. Whose fault was it that he did all of those things? Whose fault was it that he did not clearly understand the situation? He did not think that three years in the Northwest would cause such a large change in his daughter. Ignoring the earlier conversation, he carried on very shamelessly, Father I I came today to discuss something with you. Oh? Feng Yuhen squinted her eyes and looked at him, with me? Discuss? Feng Jinyuan waved his hand, no, it's something I must beg of you. While saying this, he pulled out a piece of paper from his sleeve, this is the deed for the Feng family's need residence, I would like to ask if I can use this to trade for the former Feng manor's deed. Wang Kun received the deed and handed it to Feng Yuheng. She looked down. After just a glance, she looked back up and used a very puzzled gaze to look at Feng Jinyuan, could it be that you feel that you are stupid, thus everyone else must be stupid with you? Feng Jinyuan was startled, what do you mean? Feng Yuhen raised the piece of paper in her hand, this new residence is not even a third the size of the current Feng Manor. The location also cannot be compared. Estimating the price, it would be nice if it could even be 20% of the current residence. If you are going to use this damn thing to trade for the deed in my hand, what exactly are you thinking? Also, she asked Feng Jinyuan curiously, I heard that this thing was acquired in exchange for the former residence's deed. The former residence's deed is clearly in my hands. What exactly did you have? Feng Jinyuan's expression became a little ugly, as he waved his hand, there's no need for you to worry about that. I came today to make this request. Would you please help me this one time, on the basis of me giving birth to you and raising you? He knew that he was in the wrong, and he could not even bring himself to call himself father. Feng Yuhen shook her head once more, I was born after mother carried me for ten months. I was raised and taught by my Persian master in the mountains of the northwest. As for the previous years that the Feng family raised me, I already said it. Through Qianzu and Chen Yu's matters, I will protect the Feng family's safety. This will be considered repayment for those earlier years. As for anything else, do not mention it again. Feng Jinyuan knew that the exchange of deeds was most likely not going to succeed, but he wanted to try his luck. What if it had succeeded? But, in the end, it was still this outcome. He helplessly shook his head and did not say anything else. He walked forward and retrieved the deed from Feng Yuheng and only said, forget it, if you are unwilling, I will think of something else. After saying this, he placed the deed in his pocket and quickly left the hall. Watching him go back into the rain, Feng Yuheng thought quickly then informed Wang Kun, Head into the palace and find eunuch Jiang. Have him carefully investigate the thing that Feng Jinyuan handed him yesterday. It's most likely fake. The heavy rain fell for two days at an alarming rate. It still did not show any signs of clearing up. Feng Yuhen had Huang Quan visit the residence in the suburbs. Fortunately, the roof of the residence was sturdy, and it did not leak. The children all hid inside, afraid to come out. The vegetables that they planted were stored in the cellar, ensuring that they did not need to worry about food or drink. Banzu bring a few hidden guards and headed north, under the guise of sending the people from Kianzu back. Xu Aunt Ming had decided that they would take action 100 li after they left the capital. This would also provide them with an explanation that Kianzu would have no choice but to accept. After all, Dia Shun attacking Kianzu was not realistic 
and Kianzu also lacked the ability to attack Tia Shun. If this matter was exposed, Kianzu would not dare to investigate, nor would they have the power to investigate. This would give Tia Shun the time necessary to produce steel. The Board of Astronomy watched the skies around the clock, however, they all furrowed their brows. Their final conclusion was, natural disaster. Xiu An Tanming held a tiger tally in his hand and mobilized the troops to combat the flood, however, the results were minimal. Feng Yuhen knew that as long as it continued raining, it was impossible to combat this flood. Something like a flood was even very difficult to handle in the 21st century. Even if helicopters were sent out to save people, there would still be countless lives that would be taken by the floods. Moreover, this was the ancient era that relied on manpower. They could only wait for the rain to stop. Even for her, Feng Yuheng, faced with this sort of natural disaster, there was nothing that she could do. These two days, a strange phenomenon occurred in the Feng Manor. Feng Jinyuan actually began to allow the courtyards to share equally. He even visited the courtyards of both Cheng Shi sisters in one day. On the second day, he visited An Shi and Gin Zhen's courtyards during the morning and afternoon, and at night, he went to sit in Han Shi's courtyard. The matriarch was a little worried and asked Granny Zhou, with Jin Yuan doing all of this, can his body endure? Granny Zhao did not understand what had happened with Feng Jin Yuan. Something had just happened with the eldest young miss, and he had been demoted. Now, there were torrential rains, and everyone was on the verge of being chased from the manor. How was it that he still had time at this critical juncture to show love to his wives and concubines, and it was even multiple times a day? This was not quite right. But after some thought, she seemed to have understood some reasoning. She said to the matriarch, perhaps master has been feeling depressed with all of the things happening recently, and he has no choice but to vent a little. The matriarch snorted, he's feeling depressed. This was all caused by him. What is the for him to feel depressed over? Ha! Huh. She sighed, after we have moved, there won't be such a large courtyard. It's inevitable that some of the manor's servants will need to be laid off. These matters will be left to you to handle. Grand Zhao complied. In regards to Feng Jinyuan's departure from his normal behavior, none of the wives and concubines in the family understood. Jin Zhen and Han Shi were quite happy, especially Jin Zhen. To be able to receive Feng Jinyuan's favor, she used her entire body to serve him. At the same time, she was also quietly hoping at heart, hoping that her belly would put up a bit of a fight and providing a man. Until Feng Jinyuan left, Jin Zhen was still unable to calm her emotions, thus she had Man Zai take care of her makeup to prepare in case Feng Jin Yuan visited once more. But Man Zai was puzzled and told her, it's odd. Why does it seem like many things are missing from the accessories drawer? The pair of jade earrings has gone missing. A gold hair clip is also missing. At the same time, Han Shi's side was also searching all over for some missing bank notes worth one thousandals. As for Cheng Jun Man and Cheng Jun Mei, they were sitting together, and Cheng Jun Mei said, Sis, how much do you think he managed to steal with this go around? Tn, a tiger tally is used by generals to show that they have imperial authorization. https colon slash slash n dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash fu underscore tally. Chapter 437, Arrest and Justice Feng Jinyuan showing favor to his wives and concubines brought about a very common reaction from each courtyard. They had all lost things, and without exception, those things were all worth a good amount of money. Han Shi and Jin Zhen were a little dumb and could not understand the actual situation. They were certain that their servants were guilty, as they interrogated and beat them, causing a fuss for a while. And she sighed was a little more tranquil. Xiang Rong sent her news that she was living in the county princess manor, thus she calmed down. The people of the Feng family knew that Xiang Rong was living there, but they did not have the courage to go and find her. In regards to Feng Jin Yuan, she was neither warm nor cold, but he was still her man. If he wanted to stay the night, she would still perform her duties as a concubine. But when it came to the three thousandals of missing banknotes, 
she thought about it. When had Feng Jinyuan learned such an ability? But she very quickly thought things through clearly. It was not Feng Jinyuan that did it. He always had a hidden guard at his side. With just an order, it would be odd if things did not go missing. In regards to the missing banknotes, and she was very resolute. She just ordered her servant Pinger, put on a good cloak and tell the gatekeeper that you are going to the county princess manor to see third young miss. Then go borrow a carriage from second young miss. Go to the government office to file a report. Just say that we lost our money and have the governor go to the bank to void those banknotes. Go quickly. When Pinger left the manor, she happened to see people from the Chen Shi sisters' courtyards. They also got in a carriage and went in the direction of the government office. Only when they met in the government office and both expressed why they had come did it become clear that they had both come to file reports for their masters. And that afternoon, Feng Jinyuan secretly left the manor, going straight to some banks in the capital. After arriving, however, he was informed that the banknotes had been voided. Aside from Han Shi's banknote, he was unable to obtain a single cent. Feng Jinyuan was so angry that the roots of his teeth hurt. He understood what voided meant. An Shi and the Cheng Shi sisters, these three women were not willing to allow him to succeed. Their ability to tear him down was also exceptional. Carrying Han Shi's one thousand tals of silver, he got back into his carriage. The rain was too heavy, and the carriage leaked slightly, but Feng Jinyuan still did not return to the manor. Instead, he went to some pawn shops around the capital. When he finally returned to the manor, it had already passed dinner time. He did not greet anyone and went straight for his pine courtyard's study. Only then did he begin counting the silver that he had acquired today. After counting, there were no more than 1,300 tals. Jin Zen's accessories were not worth any money. The hidden guard had received orders to steal a large bracelet from the jewelry box that Jin Zen took good care of. Who knew that the bracelet was something that he had bought and gifted to Jin Zen, but it was a cheap item that he had purchased on the side of the road for under tentals, however, he had told Jin Zen that it was an antique, which caused Jin Zen to treat it as a treasure. It was the earrings that he had taken from the Cheng Shi sisters that were sold for 300 tals, but this was still too far from the 8,000 tals required to pay rent each month. He had given Jiang Yuan a fake deed, and this matter would be seen through sooner or later, but there was nothing that he could do. He definitely could not allow the matriarch or anyone else find out about the deed. Right now, all he could do was gain as much money as quickly as possible. He would need to think of a way to earn 8,000 tals each month to continue renting the current residence that the Feng family lived in. Like that, they would not move. He would then just need to swap the fake deed for the real deed. Unfortunately, he absolutely never thought that and she and the Cheng Shi sisters, those lowly people would actually file a report, voiding those banknotes. How could this be good for him? He was extremely anxious while sitting in his study. His hidden guard appeared in front of him, coming up with an idea, how about we take from the elder madam's side? The elder madam should have plenty of money hidden away. We can take from that to take care of this urgent situation. When we have taken care of the situation, we can just return it. It was not that Feng Jinyuan had not thought of this method, but even I don't know where she had hidden her money. How can we do anything? The hidden guard thought a little then said, how about searching at night? Feng Jinyuan pondered a bit then nodded, that's fine. Right now, we don't have any better options. We can only borrow a bit for now. Or he felt that there was another option, think of a way to steal the real thing back from A Heng. Once these words came out, the hidden guard immediately shook his head, no way, no way. Master, please excuse this subordinate for being incapable. In order to prevent anyone from getting any ideas of stealing the method for producing steel, second young Miss Manor has become like an impenetrable fortress. Not to mention people, even a stray bird could not get in. This was a point that Feng Jinyuan naturally understood. He helplessly sighed, forget it, go take a look at the elder madam's side overnight. Just as he said this, a male servant's voice came with an urgent knock at the door, Master. Master. 
the hidden guard vanished, and Feng Jinyuan hid the money that was on the table. Only then did he say, Come in. The servant pushed the door open and wiped away some of the rain on his face, hurriedly saying, Master, quickly go to the front yard to take a look. The governor, Lord Xu, has brought a group of soldiers here, saying that he has come to arrest and bring you to justice. What? Feng Jinyuan was shocked, and he subconsciously moved his hand to the bag of silver under the table. He thought to himself, could it be that this has caused a big problem? But he immediately calmed down once more. That was impossible. No matter how much those three women tore at him, it was just to make him unable to take their money. It was impossible that anyone would be taken in over it. But if it was not that, then his heart suddenly trembled, as he thought to himself that this was not good. Something must have happened with the deed. The servant saw that he was standing in place without moving and could not help but hurry, Master, Elder Madam and everyone else in the manor has already gone to the main hall of Peony Courtyard. Master should quickly go and take a look. Feng Jinyuan had a belly full of bitterness. It seemed that this matter could not be avoided, thus he gritted his teeth and bit the bullet, going toward Peony Courtyard. It was raining even harder. Pine Courtyard was not far from Peony Courtyard, and he even wore a cloak, however, he still ended up partially soaked. Feng Jinyuan was thinking that if it continued raining like this, would they remain in the manor, unable to move? While thinking, he arrived at the hall and saw that Peony Courtyard's hall was filled with soldiers. Xi Jinyuan, who was at the front, was standing there and talking to the matriarch. This official did not want to harm this friendship. After all, no matter what is said, this is still County Princess Jin's maternal family. But Lord Feng did something that absolutely must never be done. He should not have used a fake deed to scam Eunuch Jiang. Scamming Eunuch Jiang is the same as scamming the Emperor. This is a severe crime of deceiving the ruler. The words crime of deceiving the ruler scared everyone in the Feng family. Fen Dai was quick to speak, immediately asking, how is this sort of crime handled? Xi Jing Yuan replied naturally, naturally, it's extermination of everyone within nine generations of the family. The matriarch fell back into her chair, nearly causing her to cough up her heart in fear. But Xi Jing Yuan then said, there is no need for you to be so scared. Exterminating nine generations is not possible because County Princess Jin would be included in the nine generations. Based solely on this, his majesty cannot even exterminate the Feng family. Only then did the matriarch manage to recover. It was as though she had returned from the gates of the underworld, repeatedly saying, We truly have been blessed by A Heng. We really have been blessed by A Heng. At this time, and she asked, the punishment of exterminating nine generations has been exempted, but the others, at this time, Feng Jinyuan also walked in. After Xi Jinyuan saw him, he immediately said, Lord Feng must come with this official to the government office to give a clear explanation of this matter. After that, we will await his majesty's ruling. Fen Dai looked at her father's current appearance, and two words appeared in her mind, helplessly stupid. She coldly spoke, Father, why did you use a fake deed? Where is the real one? Cheng Jun Man also had a puzzled expression and asked him, These past few days, husband has been avoiding the topic of the deed. Has something been hidden from us? With them asking their questions, the matriarch also felt that something was off. She immediately turned a questioning gaze on Feng Jinyuan. This caused Feng Jinyuan's face to feel hot, and he could only make up some nonsense, it's been lost. He then looked at Xi Jingyuan, I will go with you. Xi Jingyuan nodded and gestured to the soldiers next to him. Someone immediately came forward and grabbed Feng Jinyuan. The former prime minister had fallen to such a degree. Feng Jinyuan himself felt that he no longer had the face to see anyone. He could not help but lower his head, hurrying Xi Jingyuan, let's go quickly. Han Shi and Jin Zhen were unable to see his true feelings. Upon seeing that Feng Jinyuan was about to be taken away, they were so scared that they began crying, desperately shouting, Husband! Husband! The matriarch angrily hit Fen Dai with her cane, 
How many times have I told you to not bring her out? What would happen if her belly was frightened? Quickly send her back. The Feng family was a total mess. In the county princess manner, Feng Yuhen was painstakingly consoling Yao Xie, Xiaozu is on higher ground, and the academy was built at the peak of the mountain. The foundation of the mountain is very sturdy. Nothing will happen. Yao Xie looked out the window at the heavy rain. No matter what, she was unable to calm down. She repeatedly asked Feng Yuheng, Is it really not possible to go right now? I just want to go to Xiaozi from the capital. Can you send me there? Feng Yuheng shook her head. The official road outside of the capital has been ruined. It's already very difficult for people to traverse it, much less a carriage. Mother, don't be impatient and calm down. His Highness the Ninth Prince has already sent someone to Xiaozu. Princess Wang Xiuan has also been paying close attention to any news. I will go over to the Wang Xiuan Palace tomorrow to ask around. Yao Xi was worried about Zirui. It was raining very heavily, which led to the entire Feng Tong County being washed away. What if something happened in Xiaozu? What would happen to her Zirui? She could not wait for tomorrow, thus she hurried Feng Yuheng. Can you go right now? Mother is begging you. Zeru is so young. If a flood really occurred, he could not even escape. There was nothing that Feng Yuhen could do. Not to mention Yao Xie, even she was extremely worried. Although Xiaozu had a higher elevation, Yang Lu Academy was on a mountain. If the mountain were to collapse, would that not mean the entire academy would also collapse? She stood up and patted the back of Yao Xie's hand saying, all right, I will go right now. Mother, just wait at home. After saying this, she put on her raincoat and brought Wang Quin and Huang Quain out. The county princess manor had raincoats that were taken from Feng Yuheng's space. She took them out countless times until nearly everyone had a set. Unfortunately, they were all for girls. Even if it was based on her twenty-year-old body from her previous life, the men of the manor could not fit. That was why, over the past few days, the people that moved around outside the most for the county princess manor were female servants. Huang Quan went to a side courtyard to prepare the imperial carriage. Wang Quan protected Feng Yuheng from the rain and went to the gate first. As soon as they stopped, they heard a very urgent banging at the gate. At the same time, a girl's voice loudly shouted, Open the gate! Quickly open the gate! Is there anyone that to open the gate? She heard this and felt that it was quite familiar. After listening for a little while longer, she could not help but be stunned. Looking at Wang Quan, she said, Bei I Fu Rong, Chapter 438, The Thing She Wanted to See Least Has Happened. When the county princess manor's gates were opened, someone outside fell, and Feng Yuhen caught them. She saw that it was a completely soaked Bei Ifu Rong that had fallen into her arms. Her body was ice cold, and her teeth were chattering. Fu Rong. Feng Yuhen called to her and helped her up. She then looked behind her and found that the carriage that she had been sitting in was ruined by the rain. The driver stood in the rain and looked to be on the verge of no longer being able to endure. Quickly bring the driver in. Bring him into the manor to rest. She gave the order to the gatekeeper then turned to tell Wang Quan, it seems that I will not be able to go to the Wang Xiuan palace. Go find Huang Quan. You two go together. Get a clear idea of the situation in Xiaozu. Wang Quan nodded. Seeing that Huang Quan had brought the carriage around, she quickly rushed out into the rain. Feng Yuhen brought Bei Ai Fu Rong into her own courtyard. Before servants could come and change her clothes, she grabbed Feng Yu Heng and urgently said, Hey Heng, it's so scary. It's so scary outside. She said this while trembling. Only then did Feng Yu Heng notice that Bei Ai Fu Rong was not trembling from the cold. It was because she was afraid. What did you see? She asked Bei Ai Fu Rong, Where did you come from? The manor? Your carriage is very sturdy. If it was just traveling through the capital, it would not become like that. Fu Rong, did you go out of the capital? Bei Ai Fu Rong nodded, Yes, I left the city. Father went out to look at an old piece of jade before the heavy rain started. 
he sent a letter today saying that he would return to the capital, thus I brought a hidden guard and left the city to receive him. But, hey Heng, do you know what I saw? The more she said, the more horrified she felt. By the end, she shrank into the chair, her face was a very pale white. Feng Yu Heng thought quickly and seemed to have thought of something. Her expression then sank, it seems that the thing I was hoping would not happen ended up happening. She quietly muttered these words then looked at Bei Fu Rong, asking her, outside of the city, are there a large number of dead people? Bei Fu Rong nodded and took a deep breath, urgently saying, a large number of people have died. Each pool of water is filled with dead people. Those people have become deformed from being soaked in those puddles. Some of the heads of the corpses have become bigger than basins from the water. Some of them no longer look human. Father said that the weather would get hot once more. After the natural disaster, there would be an epidemic. He wanted me to come and have you think of an idea. Bei Fu Rong looked at Feng Yu Heng, some expectation in her eyes. Feng Yu Heng had no true grasp of the situation. She did not think that the situation outside the city would be so bad. She asked Bei Fu Rong, why are there so many people? Bei Fu Rong told her, they're all refugees fleeing toward the city. Some died along the way, and some died outside the gates because they could not enter the capital. She heard something important, they could not enter the city? Bei Fu Rong nodded, that's right. The refugees only view the capital as a pillar of moral support. They just thought that the capital would not become drowned by water, however, they did not think of how they did not have any relatives to ask for help. For the people that could point out where their relatives lived, people would immediately be sent to investigate. Once they had been found, they would be allowed in. But those that do not have relatives were definitely not allowed in. In truth she paused for a moment then said, Father said that in truth, many of the people died of hunger. I understand. Feng Yuhen waved her hand and gestured for Bei Fu Rong to not continue saying anything further. Her mood was a bit of a mess. Although it was not that she had not thought of this situation, now that it had truly occurred, it was still a little hard to accept for someone that came from the modern era. A hey Heng. Bei Fu Rong called out to her, Father said that you are the only one that can control the epidemic. Can you think of anything that can be done? I'm scared I'm scared her speech was no longer smooth, and her face became even paler. It was as though she had remembered something extremely scary. She could not sit still, as she leapt up from the chair. Grabbing Feng Yu Heng, she panted and said, I'm afraid that those refugees will become too hungry and will will, will eat people. She finished Bei Fu Rong's incomplete sentence. She also shivered, unable to stop herself. Famine was a problem. People eating each other was the outcome that she least wanted to see. Fu Rong, calm down for now. Listen to me. She calmed herself down and pressed down on Bei Fu Rong's shoulders. Putting in some strength, it was as though she hoped to give some of her own strength away. Bei Fu Rong had indeed calmed down a great deal under her support. She then heard Feng Yu Hen continue, controlling the epidemic is indeed important but that can only be done after the rain has stopped. Right now, the priority is to take care of the refugees. We absolutely must not allow the situation to devolve into people eating other people. Do you understand? Bei Fu Rong subconsciously nodded, but she was still a little confused. What should we do? Feng Yu Hen told her, I will prepare a new carriage for you. Go find Tanch. Have her go by rice using her status as the imperial daughter. If there are no fresh vegetables, use pickled vegetables. At the very least, we must ensure that the refugees can have two bowls of congee each day. Only by ensuring that they live can we avoid disaster. Bei Fu Rong also knew that they were in a state of emergency. Calming herself down, she immediately stood up and nodded, saying, All right, I will head out. Feng Yu Hen walked over to the dresser and pulled out a raincoat for her. She then personally sent Bei Fu Rong out. Just after she left, she very quickly noticed a group of soldiers hurriedly running past the manor's entrance. They were carrying a large number of things, and there was a wooden frame. One of the people rushed over to her. 
Feng Yuhen looked and found that it was someone familiar. Wang Zuo, where are you guys going? She took the initiative to ask. The person that had come was Wang Zuo, covered in a cloak. His face was covered in rainwater. He ran over and loudly said, County Princess, His Highness the Ninth Prince ordered for us to prepare a shelter for the refugees to block the rain. Only then did she understand why the soldiers that had passed by were carrying a wooden frame. But with it raining so heavily, will the shelter be of any use? Can they be allowed into the capital? Wang Zuo repeatedly waved his hand, County Princess, there are too many people. If they came it, it would become a mess, and there is no place for them to take shelter from the rain. Feng Yuhen knew that this was reality. For the country, any place could become a mess, but the capital was the exception. Based on what Bai Fu Rong had said, there were already a very large number of refugees outside. If they were all let into the capital, it would definitely become a mess. She did not keep Wang Zuo any longer, only reminding him. Just setting up shelters is no good. People also need to be sent to carry the corpses far away. Gather them together. I will think of something later on to burn them. Wang Zuo nodded, loudly saying, County Princess, quickly go back. This subordinate will get to work. After saying this, he rushed back into the rain. Feng Yuhen watched the soldiers run further and further away. She became worried once more. With it raining so heavily, would that shelter be of any use? Exactly how many refugees were there outside the city? How large did this shelter need to be? She pondered for a while then turned and went back. She called King Yu to her room. Spreading out a piece of paper, she wrote while saying, in a moment, have people go over to Hundred Herb Hall. Following what I wrote, have the people over the prepare these medicines. Also, have them prepare some extra help. They need to be very skilled with their hands and have medical knowledge. These may be needed later on. After she finished speaking, she put down her pen and handed the piece of paper to King Yu, don't go on your own. Just have someone send it. Return quickly. We will be going into the palace. The torrential rains outside still showed no signs of easing up. In fact, it also began hailing. The county princess manor had increased the thickness of the carriages to prevent mishaps. Feng Yuhen brought King Yu along in her imperial carriage and went toward the imperial palace. When they passed by the Yu palace, she especially stopped to inquire. She found that Xiu Aunt Tan Ming was also at the palace, thus she hurried the driver to go faster. All of the imperial palace's gates were closed tight. The imperial guards had set up a canopy but they could still become soaked by the rain. Seeing that a carriage had stopped at the gate, a guard quickly went over. The emperor had already given the order that it was currently a state of emergency. If a member of the court had an emergency to report, they could enter the palace at any time. Although the palace's gates were firmly shut, if there was a report, they would be permitted to enter at any time. Because it was raining heavily, the guards could not see clearly what sort of carriage it was. Just as he was about to go forward to ask, Feng Yu Heng lifted the curtain and poked her head out. Once they saw that it was County Princess Jin, they did not even ask, directly opening the palace's gate. One of the guards even said, There is no need for County Princess to get out of the carriage. Just enter in the Imperial carriage. His Highness the Ninth Prince already knew that County Princess would be coming and he passed along the message saying to go straight to Heavenly Hall upon arriving at the palace. Feng Yu Heng nodded and did not say anything else. Hurrying the driver, the carriage rushed in the direction of Heavenly Hall. The carriage continued until it reached the square inches front of Heavenly Hall before stopping. King Yu opened up an umbrella that Feng Yu Heng had prepared and held it up to prevent her from being hit by hail. The two then walked into the rain in the direction of Heavenly Hall while wearing their raincoats and rain boots. When they reached the entrance, they heard the Emperor shout, It's going to continue raining for another five days. If it rains for another five days, won't the Imperial Palace also become flooded? With the capital already in this situation, how can the outer provinces survive? No good, no good. You must think of a solution for this. We cannot allow it to continue like this. 
Immediately following this came another helpless voice, saying, Your Majesty, this is a meteorological phenomenon. This official really cannot do anything. If there's nothing that you can do then think. Men cannot fight with the heavens. The two went back and forth, neither giving any ground. Feng Yuhen quickened her pace slightly and found that the person speaking with the emperor was someone that she had met before. Although she was not familiar with them, she had an impression of them. She walked forward and saluted the emperor first, saying, Daughter-in-law greets father emperor. The emperor quickly waved his hand, quickly get up. We were waiting for you. Feng Yuhen stood up and looked at Xu Anteming, who was standing to the side. She then turned her attention to the person that had been speaking to the emperor. After looking at him for a while, a faint smile appeared on her face. She slightly nodded and took the initiative to say, Lord Jianzheng of the Board of Astronomy, greetings. Jianzheng's body swayed, and he subconsciously took half a step back. His expression then turned cold, as he quickly returned the gesture, this lowly official greets county princess. The emperor was a little annoyed, don't bother with all of that pointless stuff. Hey Heng, quickly come here. He waved to Feng Yu Heng. Only after she walked over to Xiu An Tanming's side and the two walked over to him did he say, the people at the board of astronomy said that it will continue raining for another five days. Tell me, how could this possibly be fine? Xiu An Tanming was a little helpless, even if you ask Heng Heng, there's no point. No matter how great her abilities, can she manage the sky? Feng Yuhen nodded, Father Emperor, if it continues raining, nobody can stop it. But the capital must make proper arrangements for the refugees, otherwise, it's not a problem if the refugees cause a problem, but that problem will arise if there are any people with ulterior motives mingling among them. It will become very hard to control. This reasoning was something that everyone understood. Xiu An Tanming said, I have already stationed people outside the city. I have already pulled 5,000 soldiers from the military camp. This prince has ordered them to set up shelters outside the city. We can talk after the people have been settled in. Feng Yuhen also said, I saw Wang Zuo. The building of shelters is one aspect. I have also sent people to take care of the corpses. Tan should be taking care of buying rice at the moment. We must provide the refugees with food to eat. To the refugees, food is God. Only by staving off hunger can we prevent problems. She turned to ask Jianzheng from the Board of Astronomy, after the heavy rain, what sort of weather will follow? Can this be measured? Jianzheng sighed, his reply carried traces of despair, extreme heat, chapter 439, with me here. The world will not descend into chaos. The words extreme heat caused everyone to see a scene that seemed to have come from hell. After the natural disaster, the extreme heat would give rise to an epidemic. The emperor stared at Feng Yuhen and asked her, is there any hope? Feng Yuhen pulled her eyebrows tightly together and thought a bit before saying, I already sent people to gather the corpses together in a distant location. In order to control the epidemic, the corpses must be cremated and the living people must be observed. Any small wound on the body, if not treated properly, may end up becoming infected. The environment that the refugees are staying in must also be continuously sterilized. The bacteria must be quarantined, and the food that they eat must be clean. In the event of a fever or cold, it must be treated immediately for an immediate recovery. Under these sorts of conditions, a single sneeze could be disastrous. I she said a bunch of things in a single breath. When she finally stopped, however, she grabbed Xiu An Tanming's hand. She then looked at the emperor with a resolute expression and said, I will go outside the capital. No good. Xiu An Tanming was the first to react. Turning his hand, he grabbed her small hand and said seriously, absolutely not. The emperor also nodded, there are some things that can be delegated. Hey Heng, you should not go. Feng Yuhen helplessly shook her head, no good. Only I can save them. If I don't go, the doctors that are sent out will not be able to help. She advised Xiu An Tanming, you must trust me. I have the ability to protect myself, 
and I definitely will not become infected by the epidemic. Fearing that Xu Aunt Ming would not believe her, she immediately added, I can give myself a shot. As long as I have that shot, I will not get sick. Xu Aunt Ming did not understand what it meant to get a shot, but when he thought about the times that Feng Yuhen had saved others, her expression and those weird tools allowed him to know that if this girl was so resolute, he knew that she could definitely protect herself. Thus he nodded and said, that's fine. This prince will go with you. These words caused the emperor to become irritated, as he slapped the table and loudly said, no. Zhang Yuan also advised from the side, your highness, please think carefully. Perhaps the emperor could accept Feng Yuhen going out of the city but he absolutely could not accept Xu An Ming going out. He could not allow his son to suffer even the slightest, thus he waved his hand and made his decision very resolute. We shall not give any leeway on this matter. Xu An Ming stared at the emperor and did not speak for a long time. Just as Feng Yuhen felt that this atmosphere was too awkward, she wanted to advise Xu An Ming to give up on going outside the city. At this time, Xu Aunt Ming suddenly spoke up, saying to the emperor, I finally understand why imperial concubine mother does not wish to see you. These words completely killed any momentum that the emperor had. His hand remained in the state of being waved, remaining frozen in midair. The anger on his face did not disappear. Instead, it exuded traces of sadness. It was as though he had returned to a time many years ago back to a time when he had lived freely on a mountain with his beloved Yun. That girl diving for butterflies could cause him to laugh for a long time. When fishing, she fell into the water, and he laughed until tears appeared in his eyes. But later on, a plague spread, and a large number of people died in the tribe. The palace sent people to pick him up, forcing him to return to the capital. He gritted his teeth and brought Imperial Concubine Yun away from the tribe that had raised her. This ended up saving her life, however, there was no way to control the epidemic. In the end, the entire tribe was lost in the long river of history. He hid this from his beloved Imperial Concubine Yun for a few years until the situation was revealed. Imperial Concubine Yun then locked herself in Winter Moon Palace, never meeting him again. The emperor had lost all vigor. Zhang Yuan worriedly supported him, repeatedly giving looks to Xu An Tenming. He wanted for him to say something nice, but the emperor waved his hand. With a heavy sigh, he said, just go. Just come back alive. Save the refugees and treat it as treat it as compensation for the Xiyi tribe. Feng Yuhen did not understand what the emperor's words meant, nor did she understand what the situation was with the Xiyi tribe. But she was not too curious. With the natural disaster before them, who still had the mind to inquire about gossip? The night was deep. When the two came out of the imperial palace, it was already past midnight, however, there were still a large number of soldiers running back and forth. Just watching it caused people to feel flustered. Feng Yuhen said to Xu An Ming, in truth, you don't need to come outside the city with me. After all, the inside of the city is not stable either. The people need to be reassured. Xu An Ming patted her shoulder, comforting her, the capital has father emperor and seventh brother. When it comes to reassuring people, seventh brother has always been better than me. Feng Yuhen understood this reasoning, but right before leaving the palace, the emperor's reluctant appearance circled her mind. She said, Father Emperor is unwilling to allow you to go. I can go out. In the end, I am not a member of the imperial family. Even if something happens to me, he will not feel too distressed. But you are different. Xu An Ming, I can see that Father Emperor does not want to let you go out. If something were to happen to you, he could not endure it. You will allow something to happen to me? Xu An Tanming turned around and asked her, If something would happen to me, it definitely would not be safe for me. Heng Heng, when there is fortune, we will enjoy it together. If there is trouble, we will endure it together. This is nothing. I am a man. The words I am a man made it hard for Feng Yu Heng to say anything else. 
she could understand Xu Aunt Ming's desire to help her shoulder the burden. If this situation were flipped, she would have done the same. As the imperial carriage went toward the county princess manor, Xu Aunt Ming advised her, get a good night's sleep tonight. Early tomorrow morning, we will head outside the city. Though told to get a good night's sleep, who could possibly sleep? After Feng Yuhen returned to her courtyard, she went straight to the medicine storage room. She then entered her space and took out all of her antibiotic injections. Picking out the ones that could be used, she placed them in boxes. She then brought out a large amount of disinfectant along with some spray bottles. There were also a large number of necessary medicines that needed to be prepared. Medicine for colds, diarrhea and all sorts of illnesses that she could think of were prepared and brought out of her space. She did this a number of times, and the medicine storage room became filled with things that she had brought out. Feng Yuhen sat on the ground and looked at the piles of medicine surrounding her. She did not feel relaxed at all because she knew that just having medicine was not enough. She did not know how things were going for Xu Aunt Anj with the purchasing of rice. There was also the matter of clothing. Thinking of clothing, Feng Yuhen sighed and entered her space once more to pull out set after set of raincoats. Fortunately, this sort of item that could not be exhausted would be replenished as soon as it was taken from the space. Otherwise, there really would not be anything that she could do. She worked all through the night, filling the medicine storage room completely, but it still was not enough. But she could not continue to pull things out. There was too much stuff. Transporting it all to the city's gates would be a problem. She called Wang Kun inside and gave an order, quickly go prepare the carriage. Place all of these things on the carriage. Remember, the carriage must be sturdy and block the rain. Wang Kun told her, young miss, don't worry. A number of the raincoats that you gave to the servants have been taken apart to supplement the carriage. Right now, the carriages have been wrapped by raincoats. They definitely will not leak. Only then did she relax. After quickly eating breakfast, Xu Aunt Ming's imperial carriage had already arrived in front of the county princess manor. It was not just his carriage. Xu Aunt Ming's carriage was also there. In that carriage sat Bei Fu Rong, Ren Zai Feng and Feng Tanyu. There were also the carriages that carried all of the rice that had just been purchased. Feng Yuhen kept King Yu at the manor to take care of Yao She, while she brought Wang Kun and Huang Kuan, along with all of the things inside of the room, into two carriages and joined this group of carriages. Just as they were about to leave, Xiang Rong quickly ran out from the manor in a raincoat, urgently calling to her, second sister. Feng Yuhen turned back and loudly said, stay in the manor. Don't go anywhere. Be good. It's not that. Xiang Rong spoke anxiously, I am not wanting to go outside the city. I just thought of how the people outside the city are all wearing clothes that are completely soaked. Even if shelters are built, and they have food to eat, wearing those sorts of clothes will still lead to them getting sick. Second sister, it's a little too late to make clothes. My courtyard still has some clothes that I wore in the past. They are very clean, and I have already sent someone to get them. It would be better for us to send our old clothes over. Give them out to as many people as possible. Feng Yuheng's eyes lit up. She had completely neglected this point. Xiang Rong's idea was very good. Using old clothes was far more convenient than making new clothes, and it was not wasteful. But with just a few people, how many sets of clothes could be brought out? At this time, Ren Zifeng, who had come with Xiu Antanj, loudly said from a carriage in the back, How about this? Tanyu and I will stay behind with third young miss to collect clothes. If there are not enough clothes from our own homes, we will go ask other homes. There are so many large homes in the capital. No matter if it is masters or servants, as long as they have clean clothes, it will be fine. Without worrying about good or bad, as long as we can collect one carriage worth, we will send out one carriage worth. How about it? Feng Tanyu nodded, this is a good idea. She then waved to Xiang Rong, third young miss, come over here. 
Xiang Rong happily ran to the back. Xu Antunj then gave them another carriage. Feng Yuhen saw that everything was going smoothly and quickly hurried the drivers to get going. Xu Antun Ming told her, the east side and south side are the places where the most people have gathered. By comparison, the north and west sides have less people. Soldiers have already been dispatched with some imperial physicians. There is not too much trouble. The refugees are mostly from the south because the rain has been heavier in the south, thus the number of people coming from there to escape the disaster will naturally be higher. We will be going south first. The group of carriages went toward the southern gate. When they finally stopped, they heard what sounded like booms of thunder. She furrowed her brow, is the thunder. Xu Antuming furrowed his brow tightly, I fear that that is not the sound of thunder. Just as this was said, another voice came from the outside, have his highness and county princess arrived? They could tell that the person that had spoken was Wang Zuo. Wang Kun walked forward and lifted the curtain of the carriage. They saw Wang Zuo stand in the rain and loudly say, your highness, it's not good. The refugees outside are trying to break in. They are working together to ram the gates. The two heard this and felt their heads swell. Quickly standing up in a see-through raincoat, they both got out of the imperial carriage. While walking, Xu Antunming asked, haven't shelters been built outside the capital? Wang Zuo said, they have been built. But just building shelters is pointless. Their main problem is not having any food to eat. The majority of people have died from hunger. Early this morning, they reached an agreement and all gathered together to try and ram the gate. Xu Antunming angrily shouted, Troublesome? Will there be food if they break in here? Are they escaping a disaster or committing robbery? Seeing him get angry, Wang Zuo did not dare say anything else, fearing that Xu Antunming would give the order to kill everyone in anger. But in truth, Xu Antunming did not have this sort of thought. He just tightly held Feng Yuheng's hand and walked over to the city tower. Behind them, Xu Antunj and Bai Fu Rong followed them. Everyone was in low spirit and slightly flustered. When everyone finally reached the top of the city tower, Feng Yuheng looked down and saw a number of refugees gathered outside the city. There were some that were so sick and hungry that they could not move. They just lay in the puddles of mud. Some of the people with some energy left were running against the city's gates. There were also children that were crying endlessly. There were also the elderly and women silently praying. She made a rough estimate that there were at least 10,000 refugees outside. The hand that Xu Antan Ming was holding gradually became colder and colder. Even for her, Feng Yu Heng, faced with this sort of scene, she could not help but feel horrified. Outside the city, the refugees flung their bodies, causing a heaven-shaking sound. From time to time, the people that had been seriously injured would be swapped out. They repeatedly shouted, let us in. It seemed that even the city tower that they were in began to shake. Xu Antunming could sense her emotions and held her hand even tighter. He then whispered into her ear, don't be scared. With me here, the world will not descend into chaos. Chapter 440, however many were killed, save that many people. Xu Antan Ming's words were like a pill that set Feng Yuhen's mind at ease. Her emotions gradually calmed down, and she turned her gaze to the refugees. She no longer felt afraid. Everything relied on human effort. No matter how great the difficulty, they just needed to take it on together. She had already said that she would help protect this country. With her here, the world would not descend into chaos. Even if there was an epidemic, it would not spread. Feng Yuhen raised her head and looked at Xu Antunming, her gaze becoming resolute. In fact, she curled up the corners of her lips into a smile, loudly saying, I'm not scared. Xu Antunming laughed then let out a laugh and suddenly exercised his inner force. He shouted loudly down at the people near the city's gates, all soldiers, heed my orders. This shout broke through the rain and sounded like thunder. Even the booms caused by the refugees slamming the gate was suppressed. Everyone looked up. The soldiers stood with solemn expressions, while the refugees also stopped their ramming. 
the people that had been lying down all sat up, while the people that had been praying put down their hands. For a while, everyone turned their attention to the top of the city walls. Although they could not clearly see what sort of person was standing there, they knew that anyone capable of shouting through this rain was not a normal person. While everyone was watching him, Xu An Ming spoke up once more. It was full of power, however, it caused everyone to feel shocked because he said, surround the city's gates and arrest everyone that was ramming the city's gates. The soldiers had been irritated by these refugees long ago, but they were afraid that they would rouse even more of the people's wrath. That was why they endured time and time again. Now that Xu An Ming gave the order, the soldiers did not continue to have any worries. The force that they had been suppressing was instantly revealed. After just a moment, the refugees that had been causing trouble were completely suppressed in an encirclement. Feng Yuhen recognized them. Outside the city, the majority of the soldiers were from the military camp. Naturally, they would be stronger than the guards of the city. The refugees that did not rush forward saw that these people had been stopped and wanted to go forward to help them. Unfortunately, those that did not participate in the ramming of the wall were old, weak, women or children. How could they have even the slightest bit of combat power? Some of them were not even able to stand up. They could only look up at the top of the city's walls. At the same time, they all had the same thoughts in their minds. Will we be killed? Xu An Tanming welcomed the gazes of everyone down below without a trace of fear. He just reached out and pointed at the people that had been surrounded and loudly said, You should be able to see it. Da Shun's soldiers only need to move a little bit, and they are able to completely stop you. This city gate is used to defend against foreign enemies. This prince thought that there might come a day when the ruler of a foreign country might try and knock down this gate, however, I never thought that the people of Da Shun would be the ones to do it. His words left everyone feeling dissatisfied. They all began shouting, and it sounded very messy, however, a few words would occasionally be heard. Feng Yuhen heard the citizens say, Why do Da Shun's city gates not let Da Shun's people enter? Our homes are gone, but why does the capital not take us in? Which prince are you? Will you kill us? She turned to look at Xu An Tenming. His face was covered by the golden mask which hid all of his emotions, however, the purple lotus flower between his eyebrows became darker and darker. She knew that the darker the lotus flower became, the more turbulent Xu An Ming's emotions were. They held their hands tighter, and she could practically feel the difficulty in his heart. Those people down below are his citizens. There is not a single person that will try to kill you. Finally, Xu An Ming spoke up once more. Listen well. This prince is the ninth prince of Da Shun, Xu An Tenming. On this day, I shall make an oath to you. His Majesty loves the citizens as much as he loves his children. I, Xu An Tenming, will shoulder this burden with all of you comrades that have met with this calamity. All of the trouble that you have encountered, this prince will face them with you. Although you cannot enter the capital, this prince will bring County Princess Jin along with Imperial daughter Wu Yang out of the city to build you shelters, provide you with food, treat your injuries and help you get through this disaster. Do not worry, your ruined homes will be taken care of by the court. After four days, when this rain has stopped, this prince will personally send you home. How does that sound? The voice that was amplified using his inner strength was like a large bell. Every word entered their ears and hearts. Those people that had already begun to despair suddenly found a pillar of support. The hopes that had been washed away by the torrential rains had been raised once again. Xu An Tanming said, in a moment, we will open the city gates so that we can get out to save you. Whether you decide to trust this prince or continue to try and charge into the city, that will be left to you to decide. After he finished speaking. He did not remain on top of the city wall. Pulling Feng Yuhen with one hand and his younger sister, Xu An Tench, in the other, he quickly descended from the city wall with Bei Fu Rong, Wang Quan, Huang Quan and ghost Dr. Song Kang, who had been staying at the Yu Palace, following behind them. Some soldiers pulled the gate open. 
In that instant, everyone was on alert. Even Xu Antaming did not dare guarantee that the refugees outside definitely would not rush in. Xu Antang was even trembling slightly. Staring straight ahead, she was afraid of the slightest movement. However, the refugees were kind and respectful. They also knew that even if they rushed into the city, it would be useless. Could it be that they would go into loot and plunder? To go into the houses of other citizens and steal their food? They would no longer be refugees. Instead, they would be mobsters. Da Shun could save refugees, but they definitely would not show a shred of mercy for mobsters. Everyone was very clear, as they all stood in place. Nobody moved until Xu Antaming, Feng Yuheng and everyone else walked out. Only after all of the carriages and imperial carriages carrying items were outside the city did the gate slowly close once more. With a boom, it left the ninth prince, County Princess Jin and Imperial daughter Wu Yang outside the city. Feng Yuhen stood at Xu Antaming's side and suddenly began smiling. She copied the way Xu Antaming had used his inner strength and loudly said, Now, we are together. Unfortunately, her inner strength was not as plentiful as Xu Antaming, and she only managed to convey her words to half of the people. The people that were further away could not hear what she had said. Thus Xu Antaming simply repeated her message, County Princess said, Now, we are together. Suddenly, a cheer exploded from the crowd. Nobody knew why they were cheering. They had not yet seen any food, nor were they laying down in a shelter. Just by seeing the ninth prince and county princess Jin standing here, they felt oddly at ease. They all kneeled, repeatedly kowtowing. They all said that the heavens had eyes. A woman suddenly asked, County Princess Jin, isn't that the divine doctor of the capital? Can you save my child? His body is very hot, and he's about to die. Once this was said, countless people immediately agreed. There were too many sick and injured. Xu Antaming quickly told everyone, don't rush. Right now, we are still in the process of building shelters. I can guarantee that everyone will be able to stay in a shelter. County Princess brought enough medicine out, and Imperial Daughter Wu Yang brought out enough food. We will be opening a temporary medical clinic and kanji stand. Everyone will have three bowls of kanji each day. The children and the sick will be given an extra bowl. Do not become disorderly. The soldiers will lead you to get food. The Board of Astronomy has reported that the torrential rains will end in four days. All of your difficulties will have passed. Xu Antaming was the pillar of support for these refugees. They listened to anything that he said. The soldiers had already begun building shelters. The shelters were extremely large, with each one being able to fit nearly 100 people. After one shelter was completed, soldiers began moving people in. All of the women that were brought in were also given raincoats that Feng Yuheng had brought. At the same time, they told people that clean clothes were being prepared. They would be sent by the next day at the latest. Xu Antaming built three big command posts outside the city. One was for a kitchen, with Xu Antang and Bei Fu Rong taking care of food preparation. Another was for a medical clinic. It was mainly used to house the medicine that Feng Yu Hen had brought, and it was used for medical treatment. And the last one was used to rest. In the face of the natural disaster, there was much less order. The command tent and beds were placed in the same building. They simply decided that they would sleep in their clothes, and none should dislike the other. The matter was most terrifying when looked at. The more one looked, the more tiring it was. The more one looked, the more one felt that it was impossible to complete. That was why matters had to be worked on. The eyes were lazy, while hands were hard workers. It seemed that the hard work of the 5,000 soldiers and few hundred guards would allow for the shelters to be constructed. Feng Yuheng also provided a large number of raincoats. The soldiers then covered the shelters with them to ensure that they would not leak. The refugees entered the shelters. The injured or slightly more seriously ill were carried to Feng Yuheng's medical room. The soldiers saw that the raincoats worn by the girls were very practical, thus they asked Feng Yuheng if she had any more. 
Feng Yuhen helplessly told them, they are all in girls' sizes. Unless there was a smaller man, they really would not fit. She felt helpless. If she knew sooner that she would be transmigrated, she definitely would have filled her space with a few more things, and she would not be in her current situation, where she would not be able to provide the men with raincoats. Xu Aunt Hench prepared ten large pots of kanji, thus Wang Quin and Huang Quin were sent to help. Xu Aunt Ming had already led the soldiers back into the rain to build more shelters. He had to enter each shelter one by one to reassure people inside. At this moment, Feng Yuheng's helper was ghost Dr. Song Kang. The injured were brought in one after another. Feng Yuheng brought out stethoscopes, equipment for infusions, all kinds of western medicine along with all kinds of needles and placed them on a bench. She told Song Kang, I did not keep you alive for no reason. Didn't you want to learn medicine from me? Do you see this? With these refugees, I will show you the most basic treatment methods. I will also tell you what these medicines will work on. I will also have you learn how to perform an intramuscular injection and how to set up an infusion. When you have learned these things, put on a medical backpack and go out to save people. However many people you killed in the past, save ten times as many people. I will send someone to go count for you. When you have saved enough people, I, Feng Yuheng, will accept you as a disciple. 